It's a beautiful sunny day outside of the city of New Orleans, but the Bayou Classic is played inside the Louisiana Superdome. And today, Grambling and Southern play for a title. Hold up. It's a tradition that has helped define football in Louisiana for over four decades. And with the Superdome playing host on Thanksgiving weekend, the Grambling and Southern players are in the mood for a little more stuffing. What a play. And just a mammoth hit. But this year's game has special significance. For the first time in over a decade, it's a showdown for the division title. Open spaces for number two. Touchdown, Jaguars. Inside the five and into the end zone. Tiger touchdown. And as for bragging rights, it doesn't get any bigger than the Battle of the Bands. I'm excited for halftime. I can't help it. It's the 41st Bayou Classic, and it's next on NBC. Southern have played the Bayou Classic here inside the Superdome since 1975. But today's version has the highest stakes it's had in over a decade. Thanks for being with us and welcome inside the broadcast booth. Paul Burmeister, Anthony Heron, Lewis Johnson with us on the field. Well, the Bayou Classic has always had feeling and history, but today we add significance and meaning. The winner of today's game will play in the conference championship next week. Anthony, how did Grambling go from one win a year ago to one <laughs> win away from a division title? That's the question that opponents around the SWAC have been asking throughout the season, and that question really starts and stops with Tiger alum Broderick Fobbs. He came in and brought leadership to this program at a level that they haven't had in a number of years up now for the Eddie Robinson Award such a prestigious honor one of only 20 coaches in the country but offensively he had to make a major decision during the season and he put Jonathan Williams at the quarterback position and Williams would be leading the SWAC in total offense if he had enough starts this season doesn't like the term dual threat quarterback so Paul I'm going to call him a dual weapon the Grambling found a way to turn it around this season in a huge way. Southern, the other sideline, they found a way to stay on top. They came into the season as defending champions. They did, and Dawson Odom's a guy in year two who's now sort of cemented himself as one of the top coaches at the FCS level. But Odom's had his own reclamation project last season where he had to revive this Southern program. How he's done it is with tough defense, but on the offensive side of the football, all kinds of balance with the number three rusher in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, Lenard Tillery. He adds so much to what they do offensively as a runner, as a receiver. They'll have to have that balance today because they're extremely young at the quarterback position. Anthony, a win for either team means the exact same thing. First of all, a victory in the most important regular season game of the season and a spot in the conference title game. An extra meaningful Bayou Classic begins next. Tomorrow, Premier League. 41st. Bayou Classic about to kick off here inside the Louisiana Superdome. Moments ago, Lewis Johnson on the sideline caught up with Grambling's first-year head coach, Broderick Fobbs. Well, Coach, back in 1995, as a Grambling running back, you caught a pass for a touchdown, helping Eddie Robinson get his 400th victory. Now it's you as the head coach. What's it mean to bring your team into the Bayou Classic with that history, the connection to the program, all that emotion? Well, that's what it's all about. You know, we talk to our kids all the time about you stand on the shoulders of great men. And it all was started by Coach Eddie Robinson and a number of, of great athletes that have that came after him. So it's just a pleasure to be back here. It's a pleasure to be back in New Orleans and having the opportunity to have an effect on so many kids' uh, lives. So a birth to the SWAC title game is on the line today. And so how do you manage this team? What do you need from them early, especially in terms of managing the emotions? Well, I think the first thing we have to understand is to not get caught up in the sideshow. There's right. so many things going on around us. Uh, it's still a football game. Right. And uh, we have to understand that we've been doing this all our lives, and we have to do a good job of playing the way that we're capable of playing. Hey, thanks so much, and good luck today. Thank you so much. Had a chance to talk to him prior to the game, Anthony, and even though he spent the last few years at McNeese State, Louisiana Lafayette, Southern Miss, he said every Saturday of the Bayou Classic, he would keep an eye, keep an ear on what was happening, and it hurt him to see Grambling struggling so much when he was gone. I don't think they could have made a better hire other than bringing in a Grambling alum like Robert Fobbs. And this is Martez Carter. 
Out to the 23-yard line, and that's where we will get our first look at the Grambling offense, led by Jonathan Williams, starting his second Bayou Classic, but he was the third Grambling quarterback to get a start this season. Veteran DJ Williams, freshman Steven Johnson got their chances before Williams, then it was the fifth game of the season. The former third stringer rallied Grambling from a 2017 halftime deficit against Prairie View A&M. It counted for over 300 total yards of offense, and ever since that game, this team, this offense, has been his. Williams plenty of time stands in and fires incomplete. That will bring up second down and 10. Lineups for the Tigers here this afternoon. Chester Rogers, the leading wide receiver out wide. He wears number 80. And up front, Anthony Cherry drives that group. The left tackle is a senior. Second down 10 now for Williams. This time he fires complete. And that's Jawan Martin out of the backfield. Picking up 10. Close to a first down. Starting defense for Southern. Arthur Miley gets it done up front. Leads the team in tackles for loss. Brian McLean is the leader in the middle. And the defensive backfield, Danny Johnson. They are led by a freshman. That last play was a gain of nine. It'll bring up third down and what's showing as a long two. Late substitution there from Grambling. Southern decides not to sub on their side. Justin Kelly in a tailback right up the middle. There's your first first down of the game as Kelly picks up five. With this new coaching staff coming in for Grambling State, one of the things that Broderick Fobbs brought in was a more aggressive mentality offensively. We see now even more tempo than we've seen in the past from Grambling State. Fourth in scoring offense this season, averaging 31 points per game. Out of the empty backfield, Williams steps in and fires and misses wide to bring up second down 10. Intended receiver, the sophomore, Verlon Hunter. Well, Jonathan Williams is such an interesting story because you mentioned this being second consecutive Bayou Classic start. Last year's Bayou was only his third career start at that point, so much more seasoned, a much more comfortable Jonathan Williams. And he certainly hopes the first series of this Bayou Classic goes better than the last one. He threw an interception on the first ride a year ago. Flushed out of the pocket and just fires that one away. Credit to the Jaguar defensive front right there. They're going to have to get pressure from that front four. And at the Sam linebacker position, Brian McCain has the ability to bring it off the edge. They run a twist stunt, a TE where the tackle works upfield. And you see McCain, the former starting fullback for the Jaguars, one of the team leaders here, making his presence known early. That'll bring up third down and 10 moments ago. The Tigers converted third down and a little over one yard into a first down. Much stiffer challenge here. Jaguars bring four with an extra linebacker, but standing and firing and picking up a first down. That's Chad Williams on a strike from Jonathan Williams. Gain of 20. Jonathan Williams has such a live arm for a guy who's not statuesque as a quarterback. The RPM's coming off that right cannon. He's got only 5'11", about 185 pounds. But he can deliver the ball on the money. Chad Williams stays hot, had a season-high eight catches in the last game against Alabama State. Back to the ground game. And that's no game. The rushing offense is kind of a work in progress here, Anthony. The, the leading rushers, Juwan Martin, Justin Kelly, less than 600 yards between them. Jonathan Williams, the quarterback, who's only started six games, is actually the leading rusher for this team. And that's part of what he brings on the offensive side of the football. He doesn't like that term, as I mentioned, dual threat, but it's certainly what he is and the type of pressure he puts on defenses. Jeremy Runner now in the tailback. Takes the toss to the left side. The Jaguar front there once again, and that's a loss of one yard. The recognition of backfield sets will be key in today's game. You see here they went with a pistol look with the running back in more of a neutral position. Lead blocker not able to get up through the hole. And then there you see the Jaguars defense penetrating into the backfield. Linebackers emptying their chamber. Third down 11. They are two for two converting on third downs on this drive. Once from third and a long yard and once from third down and 10 a moment ago. Empty backfield for Jonathan Williams. Going to keep it himself. 
And get out only to the 42-yard line. Nice gain of six, but he needed 11. And that'll be bring up fourth down and five. Southern showed more of a mush rush on the previous couple of third downs because they know that Jonathan Williams has the ability to run if a running lane is there. That time they did run a twist stunt. That's what got home for him. So fourth down now, the Tigers make the decision to punt from the Jaguar 39-yard line. And back deep is the leading receiver for Southern, Willie Quinn. Quinn lets that one bounce into the end zone. So the Tigers had some movement on that first drive, but it ended with a punt. Our first look at the Jaguar offense after this. The Bayou Classic is brought to you by Progressive. Comparing rates to help you save. Now that's Progressive. And by Frostbrood at Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. We have a most meaningful Bayou Classic here in the city of New Orleans. That's what's happening outside. Inside, it's Grambling and Southern for the 41st time in the Bayou Classic. This one, though, sends the winner to the conference championship game in Houston next Saturday. Austin Howard, two freshman quarterback, looking up top on his first play. Can't throw it any better than that, but it falls incomplete. Reggie Travis, the transfer from Memphis, couldn't hold on. We do have a penalty marker back on the 32-yard line. See one-on-one -on -one coverage here on the outside. This is what Grambling State has specialized in almost exclusively this season. Now, you've got to keep in mind here, that every play will be reviewed in today's game. Holding. Defense number 37. 10 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Holding on Leandre Vallet, senior defensive back. In the same fashion that you have available at the major college level, there's officials upstairs who have the ability to review every single snap. That play from Reggie Travis, very close to a reception, didn't complete the process. First down and 10 once again from the 30-yard line. Lenard Tillery around the right side. You see the quick feet and the explosion there. Didn't have much right away, but found a way to pick up nine. Austin Howard, a year ago today, he was a senior at West St. John High School in nearby Edgar, Louisiana. Now he is the starting quarterback for the Jaguars. One win away from their second consecutive appearance in the conference title. There's Lenard Tillery again. No surprise to see him get it two carries in a row because he started this game 27 yards away from becoming the first 1,000-yard rusher in 11 years for Southern, and he is just a sophomore. Up front, nothing but juniors and seniors. That group is led by the senior Zach Brown. Illegal substitution, defense, 12 in the formation, 5-yard penalty, second down. Sloppy start for Grambling that early in this drive. That's already two penalties on that defense. I asked Roderick Fobbs about that on the defensive side of the football, whether or not his defense could react the properly to the, first down. to the tempo that they would see from Southern's offense. And he said, we're the fastest moving offense in the SWAC. I think our defense has seen enough tempo, but we see here earlier or so far early in this ball game that their defense is having trouble keeping pace. Southern now inside of Grambling territory for the first time. Third carry for Tillery. Met right at the 47-yard line. Tackled by Jamison Goins. As for the Tiger defense, there's Goins right up front, the junior. And the strength of the Tiger D, Anthony, really lies in the middle with these two linebackers. We'll see a lot of stem and disguise prowling that they like to use with Aaron Breed and Steve Orisakwe. And in the back end, Tyree Hollins, the senior leads an interception and also tackles in that defensive backfield. Second down, seven now for the Southern offense. And the give again, well, it's kept this time. Deontay Shorts, the backup quarterback in. He started earlier in the season. Now, Anthony, is just a supplement to Austin Howard. That time picks up three. And Austin Howard, the more accomplished passer between the two quarterbacks. But we knew coming in that we would see Deontay Shorts situationally because he is the guy who runs that spread option for them so effectively. And now back in, the starting quarterback, Austin Howard. 
And I mentioned he went to St. John High School about an hour away in Edgar. He replaced a man named Dre Joseph there. Dre Joseph went on to, to play here and play very well, the conference player of the year last year. Now he replaces Joseph once again and faces third down and four. Stands in looking for the fade. His top wide out is Willie Quinn goes up to get it and comes down with a first down. Jaguar gain of 31. LJ Parker is the defensive back in press man position against fast Willie Quinn. To keep up with that type of speed, you have to make sure the pass rush is getting home. The balance between pass rush and coverage in the secondary not on point early in today's contest. Tillery up the middle to the 11-yard line, and that's uh, that play before Anthony, a good example. You don't need height to go up and get a ball. <laughs> Willie Quinn only 5 feet 6 inches. You don't normally throw a jump ball to a player who's only 5'6", but we see here that this is a part of the game plan for the Jaguars. They know there's going to be pressure. They know that pass rush will likely get home from the Tigers' defensive front, but can they make them pay? Red zone offense for Southern, number one in the SWAC, scoring 88% of the time. They get inside the 20-yard line. There's their top rush artillery. Nice cut. And couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. He loses two yards, tackled made by Steve Orosakwi, the linebacker you highlighted earlier. Big fan of the way Orosakwi plays in the backfield. He's always on in the opponent's side of the line of scrimmage. You see their defenders crawling, biting, scratching their way, trying to get to the football. It's on the line today in the Bayou Classic, the first time in years, a championship on the line here in New Orleans. I mentioned the red zone success take it one step further and what's happened here recently they've scored touchdowns on nine of the last ten trips inside the 20 and this will be third down and ten looking to the end zone touchdown Willie Quinn Austin Howard to Willie Quinn, his top receiver from 13 yards out, and Southern leads by six. Pass rush picked up on the additional blitzer. Timing so key on that play. A freshman quarterback playing beyond his years, putting it right on the money to his speedy wide out. Willie Quinn had been kind of quiet the last couple of games as Southern leaned on the running game in the last couple of victories. Only five catches in the last two. But he ends the first series with a touchdown, 13 yards out. Good touch and accuracy from the freshman, the true freshman, Austin Howard. Extra point is up and in, and Southern has seven points on the board as they look for a seventh win in a row. This year's three of Super Bowl 49. The Premier League continues tomorrow morning on NBCSN. The surprise team of the year takes on last year's champion, Southampton, Manchester City. It takes place tomorrow morning, 7.30 Eastern, only on NBCSN. The Southern Jaguars won this game easily last year. They made it look easy on their first drive. True freshman quarterback Austin Howard, 2 for 2, 43 yards, both completions to his top wideout, Willie Quinn. 13-yard reception from Quinn ends that one, and it's 7 to nothing. Southern, 7.46 left in the first quarter. Grambling offense did move the football on its first possession into the Southern territory. Game. Chicken team, five-yard penalty, re-kick. The old delay game on a kickoff, Anthony. <laughs> Dawson Odoms, disciplinarian that he is. We're looking at the least penalized team in the SWAC. Certainly wouldn't expect something procedural like that on a kickoff. And when he took over then as the interim head coach early in 2012, the one word he used was discipline that he hoped to define his Southern Jaguars. Kajandre Domino from his own 10-yard line. Domino Domino slides down at the 28-yard line. We are early in the 41st Bayou Classic, and Southern leads by seven. NBC. 
Former Grambling running back in his first year as Grambling head coach Broderick Fobbs inherited a team that won one game last year and also one game the year before and has them one win away from playing in the conference championship game. False start. 74 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. I think there's reason to call what he has done this year the biggest turnaround in all of Division I. You look at FCS and FBS. The last two years, they were 2-21. and 21, And only five of the 252 teams at the Division I level had that few of wins. They come in here at 7-1 in conference play today. Jonathan Williams with a strike right away to Chad Williams to pick up five. Tackle made by DeAndre Woodland. Jonathan Williams on target early. Also keep in mind he is the leading rusher for this team. Going for a little over 400 yards coming into this one. Keeps it himself and that's why he's piled up those yards. Strong and fast. And that'll be about a yard short of a first down. When they go to that pistol set, you see there the running back, Justin Kelly, behind Williams at the home position. When he's neutral like that, that's when you'll see more frequently Grambling State going to that spread option or any sort of downhill run game. Justin Kelly, the tailback now on third down and one. Williams. And Williams gets just enough. We'll call it two yards to move the chains and first down and ten Grambling. It was interesting talking to Broderick Fobbs about Jonathan Williams because he said it was such a, a difficult talent to evaluate where you're putting in a new offense, and he saw D.J. Williams, he saw Steven Johnson looking more comfortable earlier on when you're talking about training camp, but in game mode, Jonathan Williams has been prime time. Look at that Jaguar defense step up and say, no, you don't. And leading the way there, Demetrius Carter, the leading tackler for the Jaguars. The Mike linebacker, Demetrius Carter, sees it right there. One-on-one -on -one in the hole, pulling the trigger, coming downhill. Second down, 10 now for Williams to the air. Blitz coming for Southern. He gets rid of it quickly. And just a little bit too much looking for Verlon Hunter. The separation at the wide receiver position for Grambling State. There'll be more difficulty there, I think, throughout today's game. And that's why the legs of Jonathan Williams will be so important. Because when Southern goes man coverage on the outside, defensive backs have their back to the backfield. So if the quarterback breaks the pocket, that's where big plays can be made. Obvious passing situation as Williams now has dipped under 50%. Three for seven in this game. Nice pocket to step into there. Gave Chad Williams a chance, but that one falls incomplete. Providing the coverage there, DeAndre Woodland for Southern. DeAndre Woodland's probably the defensive back throughout the entire secondary for Southern that loves to challenge wide receivers the most. He gets very handsy, and we'll see here, even with the ball in flight down the field, the back judge allows Woodland to have a little bit of contact, and I respect that. He goes with the vet move, the senior. He's got the hand just tugging away at the hip of Chad Williams. That's two possessions now for the Grambling offense. They attempt the fake, but the ball never got where it was supposed to go. Falls to the ground. And Southern will take over on the Grambling 36-yard line. Recovering that fumble, Torres Joseph. It looked like from the up-back position, Dre Fuslier had the ball snapped to him, but he didn't look ready. Didn't seem prepared for the long snap from Byron Williams. And so if that was a fake, then the guy who was supposed to be running the football just didn't seem prepared. That's why it's so important to echo the calls in all these situations, especially in a louder stadium than many of these players are used to playing in. Grambling now, unfortunately, for Broderick Fobbs. 31 turnovers this season. That is the most in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. First down and 10 from the 36. And Austin Howard tried to fit one in there to Willie Quinn. His last pass went for a touchdown to Quinn. Tight coverage from Nicholas Peoples. And the ball ends up hitting Nicholas Peoples right in the back of the head. You see there, fast Willie Quinn again. He stair steps the defensive back. And then the safety coming over at the right safety position. Peoples doesn't have his eyes around. That was an opportunity to get a takeaway right back. Should have said back of the helmet provided there for the coverage. <laughs> 
Hey, it works. Brings up second down and ten. Leonard Tillery cutting it back and cutting it back again. Rambling stops it for a huge loss. Tillery loses nine yards. And leading the way there, the defensive back, David Smith. This aggressive nature that Grambling State has brought with their defense. Their defensive coordinator, Everett Todd, talks about 40 minutes of hell. And his head coach, Broderick Fobbs, really loves that type of aggressive mentality. It was a much maligned defense last season. They may not have the playmakers at every level, but when you put a defender in an aggressive mentality, he can be at his best. Third down offense in the first quarter has been terrific for some in the last four games They've converted 10 out of 13 times in the first quarter. This will be tough though on third down and 19 Tigers bring five Good pocket for Howard as he looks deep touchdown Jaguars Pressure brought from the Tigers up front again. Nice job picking it up. One on one coverage on the back end. Mike Roach just allows the free release to Mike Jones. And the freshman quarterback for the Jaguars puts it right on the money. 45 yards from Austin Howard to Mike Jones. Now we still have 408 left in the first quarter. And the Jaguars already up 13 to nothing. Go ahead and make it 14 to nothing. Willie Quinn has a touchdown reception. Mike Jones also has one pretty hookup with Austin Howard. And the Jaguars lead by 14. Our Mike Jones, one catch, 45-yard touchdown reception. Reason for smiles and congratulations on the sidelines. That was the second touchdown pass from Austin Howard in the first quarter. And Southern up by a couple of touchdowns. Kajandre Domino just past the 30-yard line. Celebrating its 10th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Mets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed more than $3.7 million in scholarship funds. Well, we'll see what the Grambling offense can do now. They've had two possessions, nothing to show for it. And Jonathan Williams continues at quarterback. His tailback is Cedric Skinner. Left it behind him. He went for the one-handed effort. Falls incomplete to bring up second down 10. There's a lot of mustard on the passes early in this game from Jonathan Williams. The majority of them have been fairly accurate. That one behind his running back, Cedric Skinner. Williams was very disappointed with his own performance in last season's Bayou Classic. Disappointed so far today, only three for nine. That is a bullet right where he wanted it to go. And that's Verlon Hunter for 11 yards. Paul, this ball had a smoke stream behind it because Verlon Hunter came in between the coverage on a curl route, just coming right inside. Williams fit it precisely where it had to be. And that's Chad Williams out to the 45-yard line, picks up three. You see two different approaches defensively for the two teams. The Jaguars relying on their defensive front where they've got talent up front and leaving the linebackers and secondary in position to clean up anything that leaks through. That's why Dawson Owens has so many more people in position to chase the football and get out of the stack to swarm and tackle. Second down seven. Jaguars bring an extra two rushers. And down goes Williams. That's a loss of five. JV and Jordan with the sack. This one of the rare times. Pressure brought, so you end up getting five in the rush. But receivers don't come open. There's no hot read available to Jonathan Williams, so he just has to eat the football. Which from a decision-making standpoint, I think was the proper decision. You don't want to make a bad play worse throwing an inaccurate pass into traffic. Southern had only two quarterback sacks in the previous six games. Come up there with a loss of five, and now it's third down and 12. And that's how you erase third down and 12. Verlin Hunter picks up 25. 
His coaching staff from the Tigers described Verlin Hunter as a guy with very gifted hands. I like to call him quiet hands because you see as the ball was coming through again, so much velocity from the right shoulder of Jonathan Williams, but Hunter able to go into the sky and snatch the football. No surprise to see him get 25. He came into this game averaging a little over 21 yards per catch. Williams keeps it himself, cuts it back. And he picks up three. Well, the Tigers expecting a lot from Williams. He counted for over 300 yards of total offense back on that game where he really made the team his against Prairie View A&M. That was a sign of things to come because he's gone over 300 yards total offense in four of the six games since, including twice over 400 yards. Back to the air, the back shoulder fade to Verlin Hunter. Good accuracy, good reaction from Hunter, and the Tigers pick up 19. This is a big time throw and catch. This is next level type stuff. The ball's already out of the hands of Jonathan Williams before the shoulders turn of Verlin Hunter. Now we see here a quarterback and wide receiver on the same page leading this Tigers offense back into the ballgame. Verlin Hunter, three catches, 56 yards already. Cedric Skinner finds nothing going up the middle. Bring up second down nine. Tackle made by Brian McCain. The running back position for Grambling State. Not a lot of explosive talent. There's depth on the southern side in their backfield, but really the main run threat is Jonathan Williams for Grambling State. But I think just continuing to run it enough to make the defense honor that will be key throughout the ballgame. He has at least one rushing touchdown in each of the last five games. Penalty marker down. False start, 80 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's on Chester Rogers. Just starts to lean black back from that slot position. Uh, not allowed to do that. After the motion is completed, you get back to your position. You have to remain stationary until the snap of the football. Jonathan Williams, a junior, starting his second Bayou Classic. Had his moments last year. 13 out of 19 passing, also ran it 14 times for 82 yards. Well, you can see the fastball that Williams has as they pick up 14 there, and that's Brandon Birdsong inside the five-yard line. There's some ball skills on display early in this ball game, Paul. Because these balls off the right arm of Jonathan Williams have all kinds of RPMs. But there's receivers picking their quarterback up, making plays. Grambling needed this drive now, first down. They need a first down to get inside that three-yard line. It's right at the sticks. And that's how the first quarter comes to a close. True freshman quarterback for Southern Austin Howard has two touchdown tosses in a meaningful Bayou Classic. The winner plays next weekend in the conference title game. The second quarter right after this break. Tomorrow. Second quarter here, the 41st Bayou Classic will begin with the 11th play of the drive for the Grambling offense. Jonathan Williams right now five out of six on this drive. Gets it off inside. Touchdown, Tigers. Cedric Skinner into the end zone to provide the first points for Grambling. This play blocked well at the point of attack. And we've been talking about the linebackers from Southern there. Demetrius Carter one-on-one -on -one in the hole with a 210-pound running back with destruction on his mind. Well, the Grambling offense got exactly what it needed after the Grambling defense has stumbled out of the gate, giving up a couple of touchdown passes early to Austin Howard. 11-play drive ends in the end zone. And the Tigers have cut the Jaguar lead in half with an 11-play, 69-yard drive. Toyota has partnered with Feed the Children for a community outreach event in conjunction with the Bayou Classic. The newly announced New Orleans Food and Education Oasis Project provides fresh produce as well as additional social programs to feed and educate the youth of New Orleans. 
Along with local partners, the New Orleans Food and Education Oasis Project provided education on environmentalism, sustainability, and health. We are one play into the second quarter, and that one play saw Skinner go into the end zone, and it's now 14-7. There's a little family scene at the Bayou, Anthony. DJ Williams. His father, Doug Williams, the former quarterback and head coach here at Grambling, on the sidelines here today. That Williams family has a lot of lineage in the Bayou Classic. Doug Williams going down to DJ. And DJ Williams has started a lot of games for this Tigers program over the years. Got injured after being the opening day starter. And he did suit what Roderick Fowles wanted to do on the offensive side of the football with more of a throw first, more of a quick twitch, fast-paced attack offensively. After that injury, though, they marveled at how D.J. Williams has responded and basically turned into sort of a player coach, trying to help Jonathan Williams along, and even Steven Johnson was when he was in the lineup as the starter. Short kickoff, and the Jaguars need to jump on it. That's a live ball, and Grambling comes up with it. How about the kicker? Getting into it with a little celebration, the freshman, Marco Roscoe, the pooch kick, goes up into the air. Brian McCain doesn't field it on the fly. Once the ball hits the ground, we know these kickoffs are live balls. McCain takes the big hit, and then the Tigers, led by Chad Williams, come in for the recovery. Jordan Stargell, big hit right there to knock it out and recovered by Martez Carter. So on back-to-back -back plays, Grambling with a running touchdown, and then Roderick Fobbs kickoff unit comes up with a turnover and Grambling moments ago down 14 to nothing now trailing 14 to 7 with the ball back on the 19 yard line Williams to the air Verlon Hunter Hunter into the end zone penalty marker is down on the 14 yard line and we'll see if the Verlon Hunter touchdown stands Potential misdemeanor on the violent stiff arm from Verlin Hunter. <laughs> That's not the flag, but it was what a run after the catch. Holding. Offense, number 75. Ten-yard penalty. First down. 75 is the senior left tackle, Anthony Cherry. Anthony Cherry, the leader up front for this ball club. On that tunnel, you see Cherry there. He's got a hold of the jersey. You can't do that. You have to allow the defender an opportunity to disengage and chase the football. And Williams keeps it himself. Down at the 22-yard line. Gets two yards back. Tackle made by Raheem Ledbetter. The last two Bayou Classics have been won by the Southern Jaguars. Broderick Five making some aggressive calls here, trying to reclaim some momentum in the ballgame. Jonathan Williams hot passing recently five out of six on the last drive now back to the air And that one nearly intercepted And that one should have been intercepted Deontay McDuffie with an excellent chance to come up with that pick the Strong safety with zone eyes here watching Jonathan Williams the entire way mm. Williams had been anticipating the open seams in the zone pretty well up to that point. This ball came out just a bit late as he was trying to wait until Chester Rogers declared open. Now, Williams had done a really nice job of protecting the football the last couple of games. In fact, the last three games, only two interceptions. Now he faces third down and 13. Plenty of time looking to the end zone. Chad Williams, the intended receiver. Nice coverage from DeAndre Woodland. That's a big stop for the Jaguars defense. He's given up a touchdown on the previous series and then a turnover on special teams. You know, Dominic or Dawson Odoms has to be pleased with the way his defense was able to bow up, hold them to a field goal attempt. Roscoe now on to attempt a field goal. He's seven out of nine, under 40 yards this year. And this one just barely <laughs> inside of 40. We'll call it half a yard inside of 40. And that's good. 
from 39 yards and a half. Tigers score back-to-back -back possessions, and they trail by four. At Book Club, they were asking me what you're doing now, Janice. Blogging. Your blog is just pictures of you in a mirror. It's called a fashion blog, Todd. Well, I've been helping people save money with Progressive's discounts. Flo, can you get Janice a job? <laughs> you should have stuck to softball. I was so much better at softball than Janice did. Where's your wife? Monday, don't miss State of Affairs, America's newest obsession. Critics rave, it's suspenseful and thrilling. Katherine Heigl stars in an all-new State of Affairs Monday after The Voice on NBC. A few minutes ago, Southern led 14 to nothing. Grambling coming right back with a rushing touchdown and a field goal to cut that lead to 14 to 10. And this will be Danny Johnson from his own 20. Johnson has a lane around that right side. And that's where the Southern offense will begin after a return of 25 yards. Three more days and then we'll marry. The winner of today's Bayou Classic earns a spot in next weekend's SWAC championship game opposite Alcorn State. Right now the Jaguars on top by four. Austin Howard out wide to his top receiver, Willie Quinn. Keeps his feet, still looking for more room. Look at this move. Oh, and a late hit. Go ahead and tack on an extra 15 to the 22-yard game. Well, there's not a backup listed on the depth chart for Nicholas Peoples. But to me, that, that penalty there is just so borderline that maybe Robert Fives has to pull him out. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds, defense number 19. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run, the resulting in an automatic first down. I mean, starting with the outstanding play from Willie Quinn here, just a quick now route coming in, and you see all those blue jerseys out in space blocking for the diminutive wide receiver and then Nicholas Peoples after Willie Quinn is clearly out of bounds. It, 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 Peoples has been a chippy player. We've seen him do things like that a few times this year. Southern ground game now moves to the 10-yard line after a gain of nine. And Tyree Brackett in the tailback getting it done there. Those are the types of silly mistakes that cost teams ball games because those are the unforeseen yards that get eaten up. Second down one. Bracken remains the tailback. And that's going to be right at the first down marker after a gain of one. Big hit from Aaron Breed, the leading tackler for the Tiger defense. Steve Orisakwi in the picture as well. Those two linebackers combined for 16 and a half sacks so far this season. And run blitzes versus pass blitzes can be called situationally, but both players so dynamic at playing downhill. Both in the top three in tackles for loss in the SWAC this year. Third down and one. Lenard Tillery back in at tailback around the left side. First down, Jaguars. Puts that shoulder down and fights inside the five. Picks up four yards. Surprising to note that Lenard Tillery is a former walk-on for this program. You see now one of the top all-purpose backs in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. He's got the little wiggle move in the hole, willing to bounce it outside as well. And penalty marker down just before the start of that play. Ball start. Offense, 74. Five-yard penalty. First down. Lenard Tillery already, Anthony, with 15 yards rushing. He now needs 12 more to become the first 1,000-yard rusher for the Jaguars in the last 11 years. You mentioned he started as a walk-on two years ago in the fall. He waited tables on the weekends before he earned a scholarship that spring. Inside the five-yard line down to the three. That's a gain of seven. It's a kind of back that always seems to have that forward lean and pick up an extra couple yards after contact. It's part of his evolution as a ball carrier where he gets more and more sound at it. Gains two there, Anthony. A quick trap block. We see a lot of fold, a lot of trap from the way that Southern runs the football. Zach Brown there, number 74, very adept at it. 
It doesn't have to be Brown. It could be the left guard, Alan Spry. Even sometimes the center, Terrell Lee, will pull out in space as a lead blocker. Third down and two, Malcolm Crockett around the left side. Tiger defense is there to stop him. No game. Nicholas Peoples, nice play there after he gave him an extra 15 yards on the Quinn reception. Here we get a look at Zach Brown here on the pull. The guy was just talking about Nicholas Peoples making up for a big mistake earlier in the series as a defensive back. Don't take on the blocker. Penetrate up the field. Be that force contained player. Well executed. Fourth and goal from the two. Lenard Tillery back in at tailback. They've converted their last five fourth downs. The Southern Jaguars have option. Tillery cuts it back. Touchdown Southern. Nothing but space and opportunity to the wide side of the field for a young and talented Jaguars backfield. Austin Howard maybe the more depth passer, but he's got athleticism, pressures the defense. Huge pitch out in open space, and Lenard Tillery gets into the paint. Well, he had one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter, Anthony, with the leading tackler in the defensive backfield for grambling Tyree Hollins, and Tillery wins that one. Extra point up and in. Tillery knocking on the door, 1,000 yards for the season, and just into the end zone there. Big hit at the finish. Southern leads 21 to 10. Oh, I love game night. Oh, it's a house and a car. So far, you're horrible at this flow. You got no talent for drawing flow. House, car, oh, raise the roof. No one? Remember when we used to raise the roof, Diane? Oh, quiet, Richard. I'm trying to. Couple of twos to keep in mind for Southern tailback Lenard Tillery. Two yard touchdown run moments ago. Now two yards shy of a 1,000 yard rushing season. Martez Carter. Nice job of fighting to get across that 20 yard line. Still up. Goes down to the 22 yard line as we await the Battle of the Bands at halftime. Let's kick it down to the sidelines and check in with Lewis Johnson. Yeah, Paul, won't be long before this field would belong to the Battle of the Bands. It's going to be exciting as it always is. The drum majors are here thinking about what they're going to do in just a few moments because so much pride is on the line. From Southern here, I have Keith Morgan. So, Keith, this is your second year to lead the band out on the field. What did you learn the first time and, and how has the preparation gone for this season? Well, I always know that since I'm a native from New Orleans, I always like to bring something new to the table. So. I'm just always amped, always excited. So there's a secret recipe, a formula that we might, we're going to see out here. Is that what you're saying? Always, yeah. always, always. What's, what's the buildup been like leading up to this, to this uh, event? I mean, these last couple of weeks we've been practicing wow. pretty hard, but we're here now, so expect a great show. All right, finally, from Grambling, we've got Michael Bradley, and you are a senior, so this is it. What are your emotions like as you prepare to come here the last two weeks, getting ready to go out on the field? Well, it's very bittersweet, you know, but... I love my world fame. The band has taught me so much throughout the years, not only as a musician, but as a person to go out of life and function as a well-civilized person. You know? So it's bittersweet. But I still love it. And what is it like to execute the precision that's demanded by you as a drum major? You've done it for the last couple of years. It's, um, it's in the heart. It's, it's very much so pride. If you have it right here, it really just comes out. It's all in the pride being a drum major. Excellent. Looking forward to it. How about a handshake, a little friendly handshake, guys? We're going to see the Battle of the Bands coming up in just a moment. Should be great, Paul. <laughs> Lewis, thank you very much. And halftime uh, takes on a whole new meaning at the Bayou. People don't leave. You stay right here and keep your eyes in the field as we are now 9.35 away until the Battle of the Bands. Jonathan Williams buying some extra time off his back foot. Fires that one out of bounds. And the front four. Front three of the Southern Jaguars having a nice series there. Force fourth down and five. That handshake that Lewis Johnson forced them to uh, <laughs> to take part in. They're kind of begrudging about it because it's a heated rivalry, not just on the field between the two football teams, but the battle of the bands is as good as it gets. Southern defense stepping up there after the grambling offense scored points each of its last two drives. This is Willie Quinn from his own 36. Willie Quinn with some extra room around the right side. Got the quicks and also the acceleration there. Already with a touchdown reception. Big return there. 31 yards. 
the diminutive stature of Willie Quinn sort of underlines how outstanding he is to have the power in his thighs to keep running through contact. A guy his size, you normally don't want to arm tackle any ball carrier, but Willie Quinn is a guy who you would think from his size should go down with arm tackles, but you constantly see him running through contact because people really can't tell the angle that they should try to take to pursue him with. Came into this game averaging 15.6 yards per punt return. Gets 31 there. Southern has first down and 10. And the Jaguars call timeout. Come out. Southern. First time out of the half. 913 left. Southern. Dawson Odom's looking to add to that 11 point lead. The Southern Jaguars, three possessions, three touchdowns so far. They're going to begin their fourth right here with 9.13 left. And Lenard Tillery, two yards to 1,000, but to the air. Goes Austin Howard. Here's Willie Quinn. And finds his way to a six-yard gain. Dawson Odom's telling us about his unbelievable change of direction skills, Anthony. And on special teams and on the offense, we've seen that already today. He's a preseason all-swack performer with good reason. He's the offensive player of the week in this conference back in week seven. He's been special teams player of the week twice. Austin Howard now five out of six. Here's Tillery up the middle, and there it is. The first 1,000-yard rushing season in 11 years for the Jaguars as Tillery picks up five. That's the balance we anticipated Southern to try to include in the game plan for today. Grambling State just uses so many bodies within the pass for us. They don't have great individual rushers with their hand in the dirt up front. So they tend to use linebackers trying to add that initial pressure. But it does leave people one-on-one -on -one trying to make tackles in space. And to the end zone for Quinn. Lots of contacts and one flag. That's Dwight Amphi. As you say, Anthony, getting a little handsy at the end of the play. Amphi seemed surprised for some reason when this flag came in. Can't say that I'm exactly sure what was so surprising about this flag. It's one thing to be around the hip and try to do it maybe out of the side of the back judge. But there, the side judge was right on it. Pass interference. Defense number three. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Resulting in an automatic first down. Broderick Fobbs, unfortunately, for everyone on that sideline, watching Grambling commit its seventh penalty of the first half, and still over eight minutes left until halftime. Southern with a touchdown on each of its first three possessions, and now inside the 10-yard line, Lenard Tillery. Down to the six as he picks up one. After giving up a huge punt return to Willie Quinn, this could be a time here in the red zone for Grambling State's defense to at least come away with something. You come away with a field goal opportunity as opposed to yet another touchdown for Southern. You go to the sideline and make some adjustments from there. Tillery with the one rushing touchdown for Southern so far today. The other two passes from Howard. Tillery cutting it back. And he gets down inside the five to pick up two. Tiger defense in the red pants here today. Standing tall against the run, at least in the last couple of plays. Part of the adjustment I'm seeing Grambling State start to make is that their linebackers, led by Aaron Breed, not quite as aggressive downhill, especially when they see the pistol formation here, the running back offset, so not as much of a pre-snap key, whether it's run or pass. Roll to the right for Howard to the end zone. He goes. And wanted Willie Quinn again, left it behind him. Tight coverage from Tyree Hollins. Tyree Hollins, one of the team leaders. And they're at the safety position. That's tough duty, but you do know once the wide receiver declares towards the back corner, that's where you get into the speed, stir speed turn and start to run up the field. It's well played from Hollins. Greg Pittman from 20 yards out. 20 to 29 yards so far this season. He is three out of four. Mm -hmm. 
Slides that one in. Three touchdowns and three points. 6.56 left till halftime, and Southern leads by two touchdowns. There you see the head man of the Jaguars football program, Dawson Odoms, looking for the second consecutive SWAC championship. He's a guy who came in as the interim head coach two seasons ago, took over for Stump Mitchell, and he's continued to lead this program. Yet another season with a very strong finish as well. Last year, his team finished with five consecutive wins. Right now in the midst of a six-game winning streak. Discipline, the main hallmark of the Dawson Oldham program. The last two years, Anthony, they're 12 and 1 in October and November. Marquez Carter returning it for the Tigers. That's a return in 19. One of my favorite players in the SWAC is the running back for the Jaguars, Lennard Tillery. We see the all-purpose ability on display in pass protection that led to the initial touchdowns. You see him from the offset position taking down Aaron Breed in the pocket. Led to one touchdown and then coming across the formation, chopping down Steve Orsakri. That gives his QB, Austin Howard, the time in the pocket to deliver a touchdown pass. But don't forget, this 1,000-yard rusher is outstanding out in space. 13 carries, 34 yards, and watching him block, I remember what he told us last year. He took on the offensive line mentality as the Jaguars were passing it a little bit more than running last season. Jaguar defense there stepping up and throwing down Kelly. And the tackle made by Brian Anderson. You see, for Grambling State's offense, it's tougher duty, even with the way they're throwing the football. There's more precision necessary with intermediate routes from Jonathan William, and he's been fairly accurate with the ball. We've seen ball skills on display for their wide receivers. And Williams delivers that time to his top wideout, Chester Rogers. Right there, as he made the catch, Lamar Martin to keep that to a gain of five. Not seeing as much of the consistent tempo that Grambling really likes to use. Broderick Fobbs likes to talk about that 40 minutes of hell that Nolan Richardson on the hoops court with Arkansas used to use back in the day, wanting to be as aggressive and, and set the tempo of the game, using his pace to put a certain element of pressure on the defense. Well, the Tigers enjoying success so far in third down, converting five out of eight times in the first half. This is third down and three. Williams keeps it himself. That will be enough for a first down as he dives out to the 43-yard line. Picks up 13. A ball came out late. But Williams was already down. The running lanes open up. No twist game there. The defensive front wasn't more of a, a mush rush sort of pattern. And it does look like the ball may have come out there before the knee of Jonathan Williams was down on the ground. They get the playoff before it's stopped by the officials. Successful passing play on first McGee down there. Anthony McGee, McGee picks up two. Tackle for Southern made by Lamar Martin. And most of the run game for Grambling so far has been right into the teeth of the defense and the linebackers like Brian McCain, Demetrius Carter. They've been in position throughout the game. They use jet sweeps, and a player like Anthony McGee is very effective when they bring him in motion across the formation, running him outside. Williams down 11 for 21, and down he goes. Right away, putting on the pressure, Brian McCain from his linebacker position, and that's a loss of 11. The emotional leader of this entire football team, not just defensively, takes an angle up the field, precisely how you have to do it coming off the edge. As the Sam linebacker looking at eating up Jonathan Williams in the backfield. You talk about manageable third down situations. This sure doesn't feel like one for <laughs> Grambling is third down and 17. So roughly they have to get to Baton Rouge to pick up a first down. Well, at least inside the Southern Territory to about the 48 <laughs> yard line. Williams steps up, fires down the sideline, and has that ball intercepted. Deontay McTuffie, athletic pick there on third down and 17. Second interception of the season for Deontay McDuffie. A hot flying ball off the right arm of Jonathan Williams, but McDuffie thwarting the effort.
of the Bands coming up at halftime. Three minutes, 59 seconds left. We always have the Battle of the Bands after the second quarter. Today, we also have a game of tremendous meaning and significance inside the Southwestern Athletic Conference. The winner and will end up in Houston next week to play Alcorn State in the SWAC Conference Championship game. 32 turnovers now for Grambling, the most in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. The most recent allows the Jaguars to set up and do this. Touchdown, Southern. Mike Jones from 55 yards out. Mike Jones has been hot in this first half, but nobody's on him. No safety help in the middle of the field for Mike Roach. Grambling continues to leave their corners one-on-one -on -one with speedy wide receivers for the Southern Jaguars. Mike Jones has been on the prowl in the defensive backfield of the Tigers. And Mike Jones only with two catches today, but already with 100 yards receiving and two touchdown receptions. That guy can smile too. Austin Howard, six out of eight for 171 yards and three touchdowns already. Austin Howard was the preseason nominee for the Jerry Rice Award as a true freshman. To be on that list just shows you the expectations that outsiders had for him entering this program. It's amazing what he's been able to come in and do as a true freshman. The six-game win streak plus the first half here today. 11 touchdowns to only two interceptions. Any senior in the country would like those numbers. He's not even a registered freshman. True freshman. See Mike Jones there averaging 50 yards per catch. Two catches, two touchdowns, and 100 yards already. It's a passing game for Southern that did struggle in the initial weeks of the season between Austin Howard and Deontay Shorts, a true freshman and a redshirt freshman after they had lost the all-time passing leader in this program's history. They've certainly found their stride. Kajandre Domino. A little extra fight at the end to get out to the 29-yard line. Return of 24 yards. Sunday night is football night. We'll be in Kansas City for America's Game of the Week as the Broncos take on the Chiefs Number Sunday 11. night football. The receiving team, Hellman, came out. Bob Costas, Dan Patrick, your host for Football Night in America, covered 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on NBC. What a game in the AFC West as the Broncos and the Chiefs duke it out at Arrowhead. Mike Jones, two touchdown catches already, and a 31-10 lead for Southern. Goes without saying, the Grambling State offense has to answer, at least with something. Get some time to run off the clock. If you don't get a touchdown, at least another field goal. Ball start, 52 on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Eighth penalty already for Broderick Fobbs Tigers. As both teams fighting for the chance to play in the conference title game next weekend. Southern made it last year and won. Rambling was there three years ago. Williams with a strike to the corner. Lots of velocity there on the comeback route. And that gains 11. Reception by Dominique Leak. See there again. Defenders in position to play the football coming back downhill. Lucky that one wasn't picked off. Falls incomplete. The two different approaches from a philosophy standpoint. There's just such a stark contrast in the way that Grambling State's defense is attacking, losing so many people in the pass rush, but the rush not getting home. You would wonder at some point if they do make the adjustment, leaving some, some safeties back. Williams now just 12 out of 24. Nearly had that one picked as well as he dips under the 50% completion mark for the afternoon. Jonathan Williams, conversely, constantly having to throw in the coverage. Three-man and four-man rushes for Southern. Dropping seven and eight in the coverage, especially on third down. Very cloudy on the back end for what Jonathan Williams trying to deliver the football into. 
And the Southern right now plus two in the turnover game. Their special teams created one. Their defense created one. Tigers with a league-high 32 turnovers, punting this one away. Rugby-style punt there. And that one rolls to a stop at the 23-yard line. We do have a penalty marker back on the other side of the field. I think that rugby-style kick is something Gramlich should really feature throughout the remainder of the game, making it more difficult for Willie Quinn to field it. Lincolnshire, kicking team, penalty decline, first down. As long as they line up in the proper formation and shift properly, I think they should feature the <laughs> rugby style kick. Just execute it well. Good qualifier there. <laughs> we'll see if the Grambling defense can find a way to stop the red hot receivers for Southern. Mike Jones and Willie Quinn only have six catches between them. But those six have gone for 171 yards and also three touchdowns. Austin Howard, the true freshman quarterback, you don't get to say this very often about any quarterback in any level. Right now he has more touchdown passes than he has incompletions. Six out of eight for 171 in those three scores. Five yards was added to the end of the run. First down. This pass rush for Grambling State. Their defensive line have not been adept at getting after the quarterback without the additional rushers, but on the occasional snap, I think it's important to leave Tyree Hollins just back in coverage. Little artillery, room to run. It's a race down the left side. And Tillery had 34 yards rushing before that carry. Picks up 44 on one game. Leandre Vallo plays the cap position. Sometimes you'll see him up near the line of scrimmage here. He's in a position to run the alley, takes a bad angle. And Leonard Tillery makes him pay for that bad angle. Eating up yardage, turning his way up the sideline, nearly taking it the distance. Tillery back-to-back -back games with 100 yards approaching that here as he has 1,000 yards for the season thanks to his effort today. Met before he got to the line of scrimmage, and that's a loss of one. And Paul, you referenced the pass rush for Grambling and how they lead the FCS in sacks per game. So far, 45 sacks on the season coming into the game today. But Southern is one of the best pass protections in the SWAC. They've only allowed seven sacks on the season coming in. That's second in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Howard with plenty of time there. Looking for Quinn, and that was nearly picked off by Dwight Amphi. This was an opportunity for Amphi. It would have been a difficult grab, but an over-the-shoulder catch to try and steal a possession from Southern. Good work for Willie Quinn there. Willie Quinn, a great wide receiver, had to turn into a DB there. So Grambling defensively came in as the most disruptive unit in the SWAC, as you pointed out, leading in sacks. They're also the conference leader in turnovers created with 27, but they haven't created one today as the Jaguars are plus two in the turnover game. Also converted four out of six third downs. See if they can make it five out of seven. Amphi with a hit there at the 25-yard line to keep that to a gain of four. Reception made by Montrell Jones, the tight end. That's the best execution so far on a critical, critical third down for Grambling's defense. Some consideration being given here by Dawson Odoms. He's thinking about going for that fourth down. Timeout called by Grambling, 123 left with the Tigers trailing by 21. And Southern facing a fourth down and seven. Coming up, it's the U.S. Bank Halftime Report. Dave Briggs is in our NBC studio. He'll have all the scores and highlights from college football's rivalry weekend. Plus, of course, here at the Bayou Classic, the Battle of the Bands. The storied marching bands, they're going to take to the field. For Southern, it's the Human Jukebox facing off against Grambling's Tiger Band. All that coming up on the U.S. Bank Halftime Report. 123 left until halftime. I mentioned it once before, Anthony, but it's a stat so good it should be heard again in the last two seasons in October and November. Dawson Odom's teams 12 and 1 coming down the stretch. Some of the struggles that Southern had early in this season, 
not only with the loss of Dre Joseph at the quarterback position, Lee Doss, one of the greatest all-time wide receivers, but they had a number of players with uncertainty about their academic certification. And they had moments in earlier season games where players just minutes before the kickoff were taken out of the lineup for them to get things straightened out. It did add to their depth, though. Well, there's no one lined up behind him, so Howard just going to keep it himself and fire incomplete. We have a penalty marker down. Now, that's a fake field goal attempt I've, I've not seen yet. It's an exotic one. It's very exotic, especially when you remove the kicker from the formation, thus just predetermining for the defense that they know it's going to be a fake. A leadership offense. Decline. First down. I was really anticipating maybe we'd see just a true attempt at the fourth down from Southern. Looked like they wanted the ball to be snapped more quickly. It gave the defense an opportunity to prepare themselves, penetrate in the backfield like Grambling State loves to do. They were right in position to make sure that that fourth down fake did not go well for Southern. And speaking of opportunity, Anthony, one minute, 19 seconds left and two timeouts remaining for this Tiger offense to try and cut into that 21-point lead before halftime. Jonathan Williams right now, the quarterback for Grambling, 12 out of 25. And the whistle blows before he had that completion. Southern takes a timeout. Let's go to the sideline and check in with Lewis Johnson. Well, Paul, uh, Dawson Odom's really impressing his Southern fans right now here in New Orleans. And we ask him, you know, how did he refocus the team after winning that SWAC title last year? And he said, listen, once the new year arrives, nothing we accomplished in 2013 helps us. A clean slate trying to bring and reach for a new trophy. That's their common goal. And if you remember, he talked about the early season when they went through some adversity, especially the first five games when they had players that were missing due to some academic problems. But he said his experience as a championship coach on other teams helped him a lot. He said, listen, regardless of the resources or circumstances, the expectation is to win. And that's the expectation he said in 2014. They're doing it so far here in the first half. Jonathan Williams has the completion. And trying to get out of bounds, Verlin Hunter. And does get out of bounds after a gain of 10. This drive for Grambling State has to be about precision. They have to catch the football cleanly, be in position to get out of bounds, just like we saw Verlin Hunter do there. Jonathan Williams has to be accurate and on time with the pass. And coming right back to Hunter, he now has five catches. That one good for three yards, stays in bounds. We now hit the one-minute mark. The Tigers with two timeouts remaining. Plenty of time as the Jaguars rushed only four. And Verlin Hunter with his third consecutive catch on back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back plays. That one for 17. The statuesque. Berlin Hunter at six foot three went up top to play this ball high in the air at its highest point able to tap that one foot down it looks to me like a clean grab the ruling on the field is a completed pass the previous play is under review We'll take a closer look here and see if Verlin Hunter actually does have a catch on three consecutive plays. Certainly not the first play, I think, of this half that was worthy of another review, but they'll take another look at this one. I think the ruling on the field here from the looks I'm getting at it will stand. Possibly even the opportunity to confirm it. You see there, as Hunter's coming down, remember, folks, in college football, only one foot necessary to be in bounds as long as it's a clean catch. And Danny Johnson, the true freshman star at the corner position, is on the ground. It looks to me like even the heel of Verlin Hunter lands on the leg, thus keeping the foot of Verlin Hunter in bounds. If Danny Johnson's calf wouldn't have been there on the out-of-bounds marker, he may have actually tapped down out-of-bounds first. Well, difficult to see with his calf there in the way, but the column field was a completion. It's going to be difficult to overturn it because you can't see exactly where that foot came down. Same rules here at the FCS level. 
it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. We see that left foot, the toes tap down in bounds. There's the shot. There's Nothing the I'm seeing there to overturn it. I do think it, they can even confirm the call on the field. Nice job of sneaking that left foot in bounds, barely. And Verlin Hunter, if that stands, will have seven catches for 92 yards. He came into this game with 14 for the season, and already with half that amount. Now inside of one minute until halftime. Featured Verlin Hunter more so in the most recent game that they had against Alabama State. That loss they had. Hunter had four catches in that contest. We played in nine games during the regular season. As a season. further review, the ruler on the field stands. Robert Fowles will take stands. Mm -hmm. I believe they could have even confirmed it, but I don't get to make that call. See if Grambling can keep it going here with the passing game. The big play passing game for the Jaguars has been the difference so far. Austin Howard with three touchdown tosses. A couple of Mike Jones or one, and also one to Willie Quinn. And Williams dumps that one off. Nice job of patience. And, of course, it's to Verlin Hunter again for the fourth play in a row. Nifty moves, 14 yards and a first down. Verlin Hunter has emerged so much recently, a true sophomore. Not just showing the gifted hands, but the ability to run after the catch as well. And a check with me tempo, 32 seconds remaining in the half. First and 10 now from the 30. Grambling State again with two timeouts left. Nice pocket for Williams. Delivers high, but skying forward is Chester Rogers. Down at the five-yard line, he picks up 25. This is just a phenomenal grab from Chester Rogers. He's not the size of Verlin Hunter. He goes up in a Shaquille O'Neal type fashion. Skying to get the football at his highest point. Gets both hands, squeezes it, brings it in for a clean grab. Anthony Jonathan Williams has not only the hands of his wide receivers, Verlin Hunter, and right there, Chad Williams, or Chester Rogers to thank, but also the vertical leap. The big plays provided not only by good catches here by the Tigers, but also skying to grab the ball on this drive. As we talk to Chester Rogers, about the difference in this year's team from last year's team, one of the things that he highlighted about Grambling State was just the togetherness that they have. He feels like it's really been a family this season. And Rogers says that even spending Thanksgiving with the team this week was something special because of the fact that they had an opportunity to play for a championship here under Robert Fobbs for the first time in several seasons. Well, his quarterback, Jonathan Williams, started this drive under 50% at 12 for 25. But he's been hot here, moving the football five for his last five for 70 yards. And it's first down and goal, 45 for Williams and the Tigers. To the ground game. And that stopped right at the five yard line. Going to have to use a timeout. No game. Third and final timeout of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. And Dawson Odoms has had a number of titles since he's been here. Anthony, defensive coordinator, interim head coach, head coach, but he has maintained that title of defensive coordinator every step of the way. Western Division up for grabs here of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. You see Southern and Grambling both with one loss. And Southern comes into this one with six consecutive wins. The winner today plays in the conference championship game next weekend in Houston against Alcorn State. Each of these teams has played Alcorn State during the regular season. Southern with a very lopsided defeat at the hands of Alcorn State, who was nationally ranked at the FCS level during stretches of the season. Grambling State actually had their biggest win of the regular season so far when they defeated in an upset fashion Alcorn State. The Tigers now have no timeouts left, and what a difference a touchdown would make, trailing right now 31 to 10. 31 17 would feel a whole lot different. I believe this ball needs to stay in the hands of Jonathan Williams. And that's not even close. Look in the direction of Chad Williams. 12 seconds left now on third and goal. And to run an inside zone with Juwan Martin as they did on the previous snap. That's just not the way to go to try to put points on the board here. 
Third and goal coming up. I believe you move the pocket, give some sprint action to Jonathan Williams, allow him the option to either run or pass. He scored a touchdown, at least one rushing touchdown in five consecutive games. And look into the air, and there's some velocity to Verlin Hunter, touchdown Tigers. There's an RPG attached to the right arm of Jonathan Williams. He couldn't have thrown that football any more accurately than he did into the soft, waiting hands of Verlin Hunter. Verlin Hunter with five receptions on that drive. And that's a dangerous pass. Many times you see picks <laughs> off and it's gone the other way. But the arm strength, Jonathan Williams impressive there along with a, a courageous throw. And the Tigers needed that in a big way, cutting the lead to 31-17 with eight seconds left until halftime. It's the fifth year of the Toyota Green Initiative. The initiative supports education and environmental sustainability in the community. This past year, Toyota donated a Prius to each SWAC school, including these two cars that will go to both Southern University and Grambling State University. Toyota's goal in donating these vehicles is to make an environmental and financial impact on their partner campuses. There they were, parks on the turf here at the Louisiana Superdome prior to the game. And Jonathan Williams makes a statement there with a big drive going six out of seven for 75 yards. A brave throw to Verlin Hunter at the end there for the touch. And it's now 31-17. Jonathan Williams was a triple option quarterback in high school. So he's not a guy who came out of one of these spread programs that threw thousands of passes throughout his high school career. He had to make adjustments as he became a collegiate quarterback. You see the evolution continuing. Verlin Hunter, five catches, 50 yards on that drive alone. Now has nine for 111 in the game. One tick left on the clock until halftime. Jaleel Richardson with the return there. And the Southern Jaguars likely will take a knee and take that 14-point lead to the halftime locker room. Austin Howard, big first half, 7 out of 11, 175 yards, three touchdowns and no picks. Big boost from Lennar Tillery, who's now over 1,000 yards for the season. He has 78 yards rushing on 14 carries. And that's going to do it for half number one of the 41st Bayou Classic. Halftime has arrived. It's 31 to 17. Southern on top. Plenty ahead. Stay tuned for the U.S. Bank Halftime Report and also the Battle of the Bands. Now let's go to Dave Briggs in our NBC studio. Welcome to the U.S. Bank NBC Sports Report. Here's your host, Dave Briggs. Hello, everyone, and welcome inside our NBC Sports Studios. We'll get you back out for the Battle of the Bands in just a moment. But first, as for our game, we're moments away from the Battle of the Bands. The famed Grambling State University Tiger Marching Band will lead things off when we return. Don't go anywhere. All the Imperial Treasures from the Palace Museum, Beijing. Welcome back. The Battle of the Bands gets started. Let's take you down to New Orleans for the Grambling State University Tiger Marching Band.
stuff. Up next, the battle continues with Southern University's Human Jukebox. That's coming right up. Stick around. I'm a cheap bungee cord. This guy bought me at the gas station. Welcome back. The battle continues in New Orleans, now up Southern University, known as the Human Jukebox.
The Battle of the Bands is in the books, but when we return, more highlights from rivalry weekend in college football, including the showdown in Florida between the Gators and third-ranked Seminoles. We observe today a celebration of freedom. Let us renew our determination, our courage, and our strength. Let us brave once more the icy currents and endure what storm. Second half, Southern leading Grambling State 31 to 17. Only look. Halftime about to come to a close here at the 41st Bayou Classic with the winner going on to the conference title game next week. Not a big difference in total yards. In fact, Grambling outgaining Southern right now, but the Jaguars averaging eight and a half yards per play. Welcome to the broadcast booth. Paul Burmeister, Anthony Heron, Lewis Johnson on the field. And right now the difference, in addition to the 14-point difference in the scoreboard, Big plays coming pretty easy for Southern right now. They have been. We've seen Grambling blitzing throughout the first half, and that's their hallmark defensively, but we haven't seen them getting home with that blitz, and it's led to a number of big plays from the Southern passing game. And at wide receiver, Willie Quinn with one touchdown, and Mike Jones, two catches, Anthony, but making a lot of use out of those two grabs. One-on-one -on -one coverage featured against Mike Jones throughout the first half, and when you're not going to put any hands on a wide receiver as fast as Mike Jones, it leaves him open running pass coverage, and Austin Howard has been on the money time and time again delivering the football deep. Two catches, 100 yards. The head coach right now for Southern on top by two touchdowns is Dawson Odoms. He's standing by with Lewis Johnson. All right, thanks very much. Well, Coach, your offense came out on fire the first half. How do you continue that momentum here in the second? Well, we just got to execute. I thought we left some points on the board there. But well, we got down on the plus side of territory, and we didn't get we didn't get some points in there. Didn't get no touchdowns. So we just got to continue to execute and play hard. Grambling began to sneak back in the game here into the second quarter. What do you need to do defensively to kind of keep them in check? Well, we just got to make plays. Guys can't watch them catch the ball, you know. But I, I think we'll be all right in the second half. We got to go. We got to get out to the quarterback. Can't let him sit back there and pat it. All right, coach. Thanks so much. Thank you. And spoke with Roderick Fobbs a few moments ago, and he was concerned about his mistakes, mainly the turnovers he had in the first half. Said that has to be cleaned up. He's challenging his defensive secondary to make some plays and stop that offense from throwing so many long balls. And in the end, he said they've just got to have greater intensity because they all know what's on the line. A berth to the SWAC championship. Paul? And that defense, Lewis, that came in as the most disruptive group in the SWAC uh, needs to get back to that identity because they were the best in the league at sacking the quarterback, the best at creating turnovers, and so far, Southern winning that part of the game easily. The pass rush works hand-in-hand -hand with the coverage in the secondary, and at the corner position, Mike Roach and L.J. Parker for Grambling State, they've just been taken advantage of by Austin Howard in the pocket because the pass rush has not gotten home, and we've seen receivers, mainly Willie Quinn and Mike Jones, as we sort of highlighted there, getting off the line of scrimmage without any hands being put on them from the defensive backs. The Tiger defense, they haven't created one sack, and they also have not created a single turnover. The special teams for Grambling did create a turnover, but the defense uh, has yet to get in the game that way. They'll have a chance here as we begin the second half with Southern on offense. The Jaguars being outgained by the Tigers in that first half, but picking up eight and a half yards per play. And this is Jaleel Richardson. Fighting to stay on his feet, but goes down at the 27-yard line. So true freshman quarterback Austin Howard comes back onto the field, and what a first half he had. Seven out of 11, that looks good by itself. But then he's 175 yards, three touchdowns and no picks. 25 yards per completion. He hasn't had to be a volume passer, which has been key. They've still been able to have that supplementary run game, 77 yards in the first half from Lenar Tillery on the ground. Tillery back-to-back 100-yard -back games coming into this one, over 103 of the last four games. And gets the carry first here, lowers the shoulder. The Tiger defense is there to keep that to a gain of two. And when you have a 14-point lead to begin the second half and you have balance that leans on the side of the ground game anyway for Dawson Odoms, they came in 58% running in the six-game win streak. I mean, that is exactly the way you draw it up. Get a lead and then lean on your strength. Second down eight coming up. Back to the air. 
First down, Jaguars, 7 for 11 in the first half. Now 1 for 1 in the second. That's a gain of 20. We saw the first time here that Austin Howard actually took a big hit in the pocket. Grambling continued to try to bring that heat, a pass rush bringing five and six players. That time they only brought five. We saw Steve Orsakwe drop back into coverage. Aaron Breed got the big hit on Howard. What artillery around the right side. And wrapped up there right as he got back to the line of scrimmage Gary's tackle made by Tyree Hollins. That's a loss of one. Part of the chess match in the second half here will be to see if the corners, as I mentioned, Mike Roach, L.J. Parker, different plays they rotate in in the Grambling secondary, can they impede the progress, you know, sort of just slow down the release of these Southern receivers, giving the pass rush that extra beat to get home. Second down 11, Tillery with a nice gash off the right side. Lenard Tillery, no flags. Touchdown, Jaguars. 52 yards out. Dominance up front from the Jaguars offensive line. Zone blocking, stretch play on the outside, and Tillery not only picks up the first down, but because of the positioning of the secondary, goes the distance for a touchdown. Well, we mentioned that Tillery had gone over 100 yards in back-to-back -back games in three of the last four. Go ahead and make it four of the last five. That run put him over 100. 17 carries for 130 yards and two touchdowns. And Grambling cut that lead to end the first half. And the Jaguars extended early in the third quarter. Lenard artillery off to the races, and the Jaguars lead 38 to 17. The Bayou Classic is brought to you by Progressive. Comparing rates to help you save. Now that's Progressive. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Beautiful afternoon here in New Orleans. It's sunny, it's warm outside, and inside the Superdome, quite an afternoon for the 1,000-yard rusher on the season, Lenard Tillery. 130 yards already on the ground, two touchdowns. The most recent one put his Jaguars on top by three touchdowns. Kajandre Domino bringing it out for the Tigers. Domino has a gap. Domino off to the races himself. Touchdown, Tigers. The combustible nature of the Bayou Classic on display on NBC. Kajandre Domino when his team needed a big play to be made. Tigers in white jerseys. Sticking on blocks, allowing Domino the free pad to the end zone. He's been featured most consistently as a punt returner for Grambling State. With the guys they rotate in, rotate in as kick returners. And yeah, late in the first half of that lead at 21, the Tigers leaned on the offense in the passing game to bring him back to get the touchdown late just before the break. Now falling behind early in the third quarter by three touchdowns again. Kajandre Domino and the special teams getting that lead back to or the deficit back to a more comfortable 14 points, a more reachable 14 points, 13.02 left in the third quarter. It's two different special teams moments, really three overall when you think about in the first half. There was the, the pooch kick that they were able to recover. Now here kick return touchdown, the fake that they stopped from Southern. The special teams advantage in this ball game so far at the big moments has gone to Grambling State. It's been enough just to keep them within, as you mentioned, Paul, a manageable margin to stay in this ball game. Anthony, the offense for Grambling has been fine, 24 points. The special teams providing a touchdown, also creating a turnover early in the game. They turned into points. Now it's time for the Grambling defense to step up and pull its weight because right now Southern has scored on six out of seven possessions, including five touchdowns. Everett Todd, the defensive coordinator of the Tigers, needs to draw up some different looks within the secondary. The corners have had trouble trying to impede the release of wide outs and at the safety position, playing far too tight to the line of scrimmage. 
Pooch kick once again. This one taken by Tyree Brackett, the backup tailback. And he's dropped at the 28 yard line. And Paul, there's that difficult balance as a coach where you've seen your team execute a certain manner throughout the season and have success with it with that aggressive nature. But when you're watching a ball game with the championship opportunity slipping away, if your players can't execute the scheme against this particular opponent, it's time to make adjustments. And I believe the main adjustment that needs to be made is to use the safeties, get them deeper, get them outside of that 10 yard range, maybe 15 yards of depth to clean up any traffic, any trash that may leak through the line of scrimmage. And we'll see if they can make life a little more uncomfortable for the true freshman quarterback, Austin Howard, who right now is 8 out of 12 for 196 yards. Comes out firing, moving to his left. And that's a Jaguar gain of 8. DeLon Baird, the tight end with the reception. Love the play call. Because you show run to one side and then bootleg out. It doesn't even pick up a full first down, but you're using the aggressive nature of the Tigers' defense against them. Second down, two. One artillery. Picks up four, and that's another Southern first down. Just look here. The box area, all the bodies in white jerseys, 10 players defensively for Grambling State within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Zero coverage on the back end being featured so repetitively throughout the game have allowed big plays for Southern. That's the 19th carry for Tillery. Picks up seven. Puts him at 141 for the afternoon. Now Southern going back to some tempo. Sorry about their partner on the offensive side. Last two weeks, 162 yards rushing. The week before is a 125. A couple of penalty markers down there. There's another touchdown waiting to happen for Southern. Life is good for Austin Howard right now. Offside, defense, contact in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty resulting in an automatic in a first down. You look at what the Grambling defense has done so far coming into this game, and their stats are pretty average, Anthony. Fifth in scoring defense in the conference, eighth in total defense, fourth in rushing D. It's the big play. It's the disruption behind the line of scrimmage they had, leading the conference in sacks, leading the conference in turnovers created that brought them to this point. They haven't done any of that today. Plenty of time left to fire that back up and get back to that identity. Trailing by 14, 11.30 left in the third quarter. Tyree Bracken now the tailback, giving Tillery a break, but back to the air. And that one floated and somehow getting to the hands of Mr. Touchdown Mike Jones. First catch of his day that doesn't go for a touchdown. The first two ended up in the end zone. That's only a 30-yard game. This just shows the level of confidence that Austin Howard has. And when you think about all the deep balls that have been completed, there's good reason to have that confidence floating the football into the middle. Bracken, another big gain down to the 10-yard line, gains eight. And the Tigers' secondary defensive backs are panicking, mistiming their jumps. And in the first half, we saw several pass interference penalties picked up. All they have to do between Tyree Hollins and Nicholas Peoples is just run through the football, and they'd have an opportunity at least for a deflection. Jaguars moving the ball and dictating the pace here. The Tigers call timeouts, trailing by 14. Show it off, America. Show off that belt you replaced. Show off the fuel pump, the oil change, the upgrade. You did it. There are a lot of places you can be. Southern and Grambling always play the Bayou Classic here the Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. But on this Saturday, they're playing for a whole lot. The winner goes on to the conference title game in Houston next week. Southern on the move once again. Lenard Tillery cutting it back. Doesn't make it back to the 10-yard line. Nice play there by that Tiger defense and the tackle made by Aaron Breed. We've seen Aaron Breed make some adjustments in his stance, squaring his stance up more, being able to shuffle more laterally, then triggering once the running back declares his hole. Leads the team in tackles. Tillery once again with an opening inside the five. And he's brought down after a seven-yard game. Tackle made by Tyree Hollins. Defensive line for Grambling State trying to play across blocks as opposed to when there's a folder, when there's that puller, that's a gap that's vacated, an opportunity to penetrate. 
Austin Howard keeping himself a race to the pylon that Southern wins. Backup quarterback Deontay Shorts in for that touchdown. Off the read, Steve Orsakwi plays down tight as he slams down inside. That gives the corner to Deontay Shorts. A foot race towards the front corner. Shorts just getting inside that pylon. Shorts, the starting quarterback early in the season, hurt his elbow against Northwestern State. And he's had to watch Austin Howard operate the Southern offense at a high level, but they're still finding room for Shorts to contribute. And he finds a way to get to the pylon right there. Our Lewis Johnson is on the sideline with a very special Southern Jaguar guest. Very special indeed. Aeneas Williams is here wearing the gold jacket, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But, Aeneas, you played for Southern as a walk-on, and then by the time you were a senior, you ended up leading the nation in interceptions. What did it mean to have a run like that? Well, it first meant that I decided to walk on and do something that I love to do, and I was just glad that I did, but I had some great parents, great mentors, and the ability to play on Southern University, and this same game, it really set the stage for people getting a chance to see me at a Division I AA school. And then what was it like to take your experience at this HBCU to 14 years in the league and now being enshrined into the Hall of Fame? Well, I said it in my Hall of Fame speech. I call it the Southern University. Right. And the education that I got and experience I got allowed me to be able to communicate and be in any environment and be in, and be in those environments successfully. Finally, everybody wants to know who loves the game of football, what is it like to put that jacket on to have it on right now? Put it like this. If I ever have a bad day at home, all I got to do is put the jacket on and my wife treats me like a king. But no, I'm number 287 out of anybody that's ever played in all the NFL Hall of Fame. There are two from Southern, myself and Mel Blunt. Two from New Orleans, Marsha Falk and myself. It is a God blessing, but it is an honor to represent this university with this gold jacket on. And it is great to see you here today, and I know you enjoyed the game, especially Paul. He enjoyed the interception he saw one of his southern defensive backs get a minute ago. No doubt. These great. young men are doing a great job. Great to see you. Congratulations thank on your you. honor. Glad to be here. All right, thank Paul. you, Paul. Lewis, Aeneas, thank you very much. Jonathan Williams looking deep. Pretty pass, but that one falls incomplete. Looking for Verlon Hunter. Had a touchdown in the first half. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Zero coverage with the safety drops down into the box. That was an opportunity for DeAndre Woodland able to rake down at the football at just the last moment. Would have been a rare big play for the Tiger offense. Right now, plays 30 yards or more. Southern has seven today. Grambling doesn't have one. Williams stands and fires. That's a perfect strike, finding his top wide out, Chester Rogers. The Tigers pick up 22. We've seen Jonathan Williams for a couple of years now. Couldn't be more impressed with the progress he's made throwing the football, especially within the zone coverage of Southern. He's finding voids in the zone and delivering the football to spots where his wide receivers have an opportunity. Back to the air, out of the empty backfield, stepping up, and down he goes. He thought he had a pocket to step into, but that ended in a hurry sack from Donald Phillips. Donald Phillips part of a very talented defensive front. Playing the three technique gets both hands up into the air. And once you control the wrist, then that's jail for an offensive lineman. Third sack of the afternoon for the Jaguar D. Illegal snap, 51 on the offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Interesting, the Jaguars defense recording three sacks, Anthony, and the team that came in leading the conference in that category. Robert Fops Tigers yet to record a single sack. Second down, 19. Williams hit just as he released it, but Verlin Hunter would have had that 30-yard game we were talking about, but lets it slip through his fingers. Jonathan Williams taking a big hit in the pocket, but when you do, you have to take advantage of these opportunities, and Verlin Hunter, who's been stellar throughout today's game, not able to come up with that grab. That's the third drop from Grambling State so far in today's game. 
Verlin Hunter, nine catches, 111 yards. Would have been up in double digits with his grabs if he could have hung on to that one. And now it's third down and 19. Williams in trouble. Throws all the way across his body. Took a late hit out of bounds. No flags. Good to see him up and run into his sideline, but it's fourth down and 19. Pass rush once again for the Jaguars making a play. The timely blitzes. Finding key moments to bring additional pressure when the front four has gotten the job done throughout today's contest, but you keep the pass protection off balance, and they don't know when you're going to bring that extra pressure. Willie Quinn back to receive for Southern. Won't get a chance to bring that one back as it lands out of bounds. 8.45 left in the third quarter, and the Jaguars on top by 21. Only Louisiana, a place just south of the south. Home to red snappers, white alligators, and blue dogs. Only Louisiana, where the clocks tick in three-quarter time, parades are not spectator sports, and architecture is performance art. Only Louisiana, where the people are salt of the earth, with a dash of cayenne, and they know the best souvenirs are stories. Visit LouisianaTravel.com and pick your passion. Welcome back inside the Louisiana Superdome. Paul Burmeister, Anthony Heron, Lewis Johnson, Grambling and Southern playing for the rights to represent the Western Division in the SWAC Championship next weekend in Houston. Jaguars right now leading by 21 points. That's Lenard Tillery off the left side. Pardon me, that's Malcolm Crockett for a gain of one. The ground game been a big difference so far. Southern finding all kinds of success on the ground. Tillery has 140 yards. Jaguars have 169 as a team, while the Tigers have only 26. Austin Howard, a little half roll to the right. That's a strike to Willie Quinn. And the Jaguars pick up six. Still not seeing adjustments in the depth of the secondary for Grambling State. So when the entire defense is within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage, in this case within six yards of the line of scrimmage. Right back to the ground game on first down. Pardon me, on third down and one, and that's no game. So the Tiger defense. No game. Forcing the Jaguars to make a decision, likely going to go go ahead and punt this deep in their own territory. It's the right call, especially based off the field position within your own 35. Anthony McGee, certainly a dangerous return man. First punt of the ball game here for seven. The Jaguars had scored on seven of their eight possessions prior to this one. And the Tigers get it back, trailing by 21. Oh. Good job by the Jaguars special teams is Anthony McGee. Runs it out of bounds. We're back after this. It's always been a part of me to fight for those who couldn't fight for themselves. Whether on my block or around the world. The Grambling defense comes up with a much needed stop, trailing by three touchdowns now. Jonathan Williams and the Tiger offense back on the field from their own 20 yard line. Williams with a little touch pass and this is gonna work out well for Grambling. Kajandre Domino with a 99-yard touchdown on a kickoff return earlier in this half. Picks up 45. That's a pretty ball. As he moved the pocket with Williams. The Domino really did a nice job making himself available to the quarterback beyond the coverage. A league of touching. Offense, number one. Receiver stepped out of bounds. And was the first to touch the ball upon his return. 
The penalty is loss of down at the previous spot. First down, second down. And he said number one, of course, means number 11. It's Andre Domino. It's a good call. He did run himself out of bounds. If the defensive back forces you out of bounds into the white as the receiver, then you're allowed to come back in and you're still an eligible receiver at that point. The penalties throughout the game today, 12 so far in the contest for Grambling State, only two for Southern. Unfortunate pattern for Grambling. They had 15 penalties in the last game, which turned out to be a loss to Alabama State. Well, that discipline that we keep talking about with Dawson Odoms, the Southern football team, it's the reason that they lead the Southwestern Athletic Conference in least penalized teams. Williams, nice pocket, looking deep once again. And what a catch by Chester Rogers. Rodgers has showcased some long-distance speed in the game. They haven't had the opportunity to deliver the football deep to him. Runs by double coverage, eating up angles in the secondary. Chester Rodgers, 48-yard reception. And back to that same play. This time, Domino stayed in bounds before he caught it. Run out of bounds at the 20. And that's a gain of 12 for another grambling first down. Jonathan Williams on the move. Puts a different type of pressure on defenses. And I think these called moves of the pocket, sprint action, bootlegs, play action, where he then rolls. This is where you can get away from that front four. Williams now 21 out of 38, 286. Leading rusher on this team shows you why. Down to the five-yard line. Williams wanted to pass, but went ahead and picked up 14. The burden of this Tigers offense is squarely on the shoulders of Jonathan Williams. Running the ball, passing the ball, making checks at the line of scrimmage. He is proving himself up to the task. Over 300 yards of total offense today, and that's five of the last seven games. He's been over 300 yards passing and rushing. Jawan Martin inside the five, picking up two. Hard to find too much fault with the Grambling offense right now and Jonathan Williams Already with 24 points Williams 286 yards passing and 30 yards on the ground Unfortunately his top two running backs have six carries for only 15 yards Fly sweep to the left and that's Chad Williams. And that's a nice job by the Jaguar defense to keep that to no game. This is where the Tigers offense has become stagnant. Once they get inside the 10-yard line, there seems to be uncertainty about how to attack this Southern defense. To me, I'm an advocate of moving the pocket with Jonathan Williams. It doesn't only work out to the field side. Formation into the boundary. Now the opportunity to run him out of the pocket. It condenses the read and forces the defense out of their lanes. Third down and goal. They've converted seven out of 14 times on third down, forcing it in and showing you the arm strength once again. Touchdown, Tigers. Jonathan Williams to Brandon Birdsong. The fast twitch release of Jonathan Williams on display again. He sees it. And as soon as it's recognized, the ball is immediately out of his hands. Well, sometimes you need touch with the last two touchdowns. The touchdown passes for Jonathan Williams, all about velocity and placement. Fastball at the end of the first half to Verlin Hunter. And that time it's Brandon Birdsong hanging on to the end zone, and the Tigers won't go away. It's 45-31. I joined the Super Bowl 49. We knew we had history here at the Bayou Classic for the 41st time. We knew we had meaning. The winner plays in the conference title game next week. We also have a whole lot of points, 76 of them to be exact. 45-31, Southern on top. Birdsong with a touchdown just before the break on the touchdown catch from Jonathan Williams. 
And the Tigers continue to hang around. It's quality math right there, Paul Burmeister, because I'm losing count. <laughs> There's some plays being made here. And the Jaguars fortunate to hang on to that one. The Tigers use that exact same kick going the other way in the first half to get the ball back and create a turnover. And this time the Jaguars fall on it at the 23-yard line. Difference in the game right now, the point differential, Anthony, in the first quarter. Southern jumped down to a 14-0 lead, and since then it's been a 31-31 tie. Of course, the first quarter does matter. It does count. It counts. There's four of them. So Southern enjoying a two-touchdown lead. First quarter kind of like breakfast. It's probably the most important quarter of the day. Malcolm Crockett, the running back now. And he's cut down right at the 25-yard line. Textbook tackle by Tyree Hollins. Hollins came up and set the edge. He's been a guy who's made plays in the secondary, leading the swack with five interceptions. But he runs the alley from that left safety position, forms him right up. Top tackler, as you mentioned, in the conference for defensive backs. Came into this game with 76 of those. That one makes it second down and eight. You see Deontay Shorts back in the game. Pistol formation, so anticipating run play here on second and long. Backup quarterback Deontay Shorts in the game has a rushing touchdown already in the third quarter. And this time hands off for a Jaguar gain of five to Malcolm Crockett. Another third down opportunity. Third manageable as Austin Howard returns to the field. And while Shorts is the more athletic, the better runner between the two QBs, certainly shouldn't just completely forget about Austin Howard's running ability as well. We've seen him move the pocket and be athletic enough to evade defenders as well. Both teams converting more than half the time on third downs. Grambling 8 out of 15, and the Jaguars 5 out of 9 so far. This is third down and 3. Letting it go at the last possible moment to Mike Jones. Who already has two touchdown catches and a grab of 30 yards, but that falls incomplete. And a key stop there provided by the Grambling defense. The pressure has gotten home more frequently in the second half. And again this time after a nice move coming off the cut block, it was Aaron Breed putting a big hit, just laying all of his force into the chest of Austin Howard. Aaron Breed, 17 and a half tackles for loss coming into this game. Number two in sacks and also tackles for loss in the swack. Doesn't get a stat for that one, but the pressure on the quarterback led to the early throw and the incompletion. After zero hits on the QB in the first half, we've seen the pass rush get home more. And that punt not going to reach Anthony McGee. Rolls out of bounds, and the Tigers will begin at the 30-yard line. Paul's an interesting connection between the two coaches here, where Dawson Odoms in his first year won the SWAC championship, and Broderick Fobbs this season trying to win the SWAC championship in his first year. Fobbs' coach was the head coach at North Carolina A&T, where Dawson Odoms was just breaking in as an assistant coach on the staff of Fobbs' dad. And Odoms talked very highly about working on that North Carolina A&T staff and the brother versus brother sort of rivalry between these two programs. Two coaches that don't know each other that well yet, but Robert Fobbs talked very highly of the way his dad described Dawson Odoms as a younger coach. Jonathan Williams looking to stay hot for the Tigers, dancing around in the pocket, and down he goes. And that's a loss of four. Getting into the backfield there again for the Jaguars is Brian McCain. When you can bring this type of pressure with four, it allows so much playmaking from your secondary. Brian McCain, we have to remember, this guy was a fullback throughout the majority of his career. He's found a home on the defensive side of the football as a Sam linebacker. Pressure with four, and that's also the fourth sack for the Jaguars. Threatening to get a fifth, and down goes Williams again. Penalty marker is on the 15-yard line. But for the second play in a row, Williams goes down. That time it was Jalen Jordan. Loss of 10. We'll see if it stands. Holding. Offense 75. Penalties declined. Third down. Five sacks now for the Southern defense. Well, Dawson Odoms is a defensive line Five coach by trade. We see the playmakers he has available to him up front. 
They run pass rush games situationally, and so they can defeat you with a straight one-on-one -on -one rush. And then they find those moments to run TE stunts where the tackle penetrates or ET stunts where the end becomes the penetrator. But two plays ago, Grambling had first and ten with a great chance to stay hot. And a chance to get that lead to single digits or at least get started. Please we set the game clock to 155. Thank you. But now they face third down and 26. An extra breather for that southern pass rush as the game clock gets reset. On third and 26, deep in center field position is Jamal Martin for Southern. Not even appearing on the screen right now, back near the sticks. That's where he's got to be playing center field. Jaguars bring four again, looking down the middle of the field. Skying to almost catch it. Chad Williams couldn't quite come down with it. And it'll be fourth and 26. What you want to do in this situation is force the quarterback to deliver the football to the most difficult area possible. Actually had Chad Williams come open, but the ball just sailed on Jonathan Williams. He's been accurate throughout the game, Paul, but that's one he'd like to have back. Tiger offense misses an opportunity. They've been playing out of a hole from the 14 or 21 points. Most of the game, now they give it back to the Jaguar offense. Willie Quinn, not a chance to return that one. Southern will take over at their own 43-yard line. After a six-month absence, Tiger Woods returns to the game and he'll come face-to-face -face with one of the toughest fields in golf at the Hero World Channel, the Golf Channel, and it continues next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern on NBC. Tiger offense goes three and outs, negative 16 net on that drive. Lenard artillery, the tailback, with a true freshman quarterback, Austin Howard, on first and ten. That's a first down completion to Reggie Travis. His first reception of the afternoon, gain of seven for the Memphis transfer. Second and three. Free release based off formation where you run the stack formation where one receiver lines up directly behind the other. Difficult to press that. Really, the press coverage hasn't been successful for Grambling State throughout the game anyway, but formationally, they make the release even easier. Second down, three, delay draw to Bracken going nowhere and stepping up to make the play, Steve Orisakwe. Haven't called the name of Steve Orisakwe yet in today's game. He's had an opportunity to make a play. But this, a big opportunity, bringing up another third down, a chance for the defense to get off the field. A junior college transfer, Orisakwe and Aaron Breed both joined this ball club last season. Jaguars right now 8 out of 16, converting third down. This will be third down and five. They need to get to the Grambling 47-yard line. And that looks like it'll be about half a yard enough for a first down. Montrell Jones got just past the sticks. Howard put it on him. First down, Southern. One of the best pass protection units in the SWAT versus the best pass rush statistically in the entire country. And the battle, especially on third down, has been won throughout today's ball game by the Southern pass protection. The offensive line and the running back position have kept their quarterback clean for the most part. Big play by the Jaguar offense there to keep the chains moving and keep that drive alive. Three quarters in the books. Jaguars 45, Tigers 31. We'll come back to the Mercedes Superdome right after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching the Bayou Classic on NBC. Tomorrow, Premier League coverage continues on NBCSN where the league's best defense takes on the league's top scorer. Ready to begin the fourth quarter of the 41st Bayou Classic. It's been pretty even, quarters two and three. The big difference, a couple of touchdown passes in that first quarter when the Jaguars led 14 to nothing. We begin the fourth quarter, 14-point lead. Touch pass, looking for Willie Quinn. And that falls incomplete. Side coverage provided by Nicholas Peoples. 
can see why they target Willie Quinn so much. He puts all kinds of pressure on a defense. We talked to an artillery about Willie Quinn and the effect that he has on the offense and in the huddle with a confidence standpoint. So that Willie Quinn's the type of guy that initially when he joined the program, people sort of laughed off having a 5-5 receiver. But once they saw the level of playmaker that he was, all jokes were aside. And back to the ground game. This is Tillery trying to turn the right side and unable to do so. And he's cut down there just as he got to the line of scrimmage. By Tyree Hollins. The Jaguars 45 points in three quarters is a lot. However, they've been scoring very well in this win streak. Six game win streak averaging 39 points per game. Exceeding expectations to be at 45, but we've come to expect the offense to score here for the Jaguars as they've won six games in a row. Third down and nine. Critical stop here. Potential stop for Grambling, trailing by 14 points. Would have been an unbelievable catch by Willie Quinn. The afterburners on display. The speedy Willie Quinn laying out for the football. Almost had the fingertip grab. Couldn't quite haul it in. He was so close. And Quinn's had such a nice afternoon. Five catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown. The first touchdown of the afternoon. It's good to see Willie Quinn appearing to be able to walk off the field under his own power. If he was maybe five foot eight, could have had that one. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that would have been a, a grab. Not a big catch radius when a receiver's only in that five, 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 six sort of range. The fingertips of Quinn. We've seen spectacular grabs from receivers wearing gloves nowadays. A lot of the old school wideouts will tell you that's why these catches have become such showstoppers. Well, after Southern scored on seven of its first eight possessions, the Grambling defense now, they've forced three consecutive punts. See if the offense can get that deficit to single digits here. 14-01 left in the fourth quarter. Punt of 30 yards, a net of 30, and the Tiger defense going to begin from its own 15-yard line. As we spoke to Dawson Odoms throughout the week, he was highlighting the arms race that's there. And folks don't realize that it comes up quite a bit at the FCS level as well. And one of the things that he's looking forward to from his institution is hoping that as other schools are getting better facilities and finding ways to increase their recruiting prowess by getting new locker rooms and better stadium fields and those types of things that Southern, after winning a SWAC championship with an opportunity at another, that they're not left out of that mix as well. Williams rolling out to his left after the play action. And he finds Chester Rogers for a Tiger game and nine. One of the things you were talking about, Anthony, there with uh, Dawson Odoms, he's really got a couple of really specific things in mind. He talked about their fields. He said he wants to see them replace their practice facility field. Said so they need the new turf in the stadium. It's supposed to be grass, but said it's mostly dirt. Uh, that's the big thing. And then the second one is that they want to do something with their field house. Said they have a great building, but they, it needs to be redesigned and expanded. They need more lockers. They need higher ceilings. And he just believes that, you know, as you mentioned, Anthony, part of that arms race, it's part of the deal is you try and recruit and get people to come. you got to upgrade your facilities. And he said if you don't do these things, you'll find yourself not in contention like they are right now, and you'll be asking yourself why. Chester Rogers with a the catch there on first down for a grambling gain of five. And recruiting comes up first, and you need those facilities to sell the recruits on one big reason why to come to the program. But then once you're inside the program and – you know this from playing at Iowa, as I know the same thing. It just feels different to walk into a facility that's first class. You want football to feel important when you go to an institution on a scholarship. Williams keeps it himself, the leading rusher on the team. Doesn't get out of bounds. Brought down for no gain as he's chased down there by Rashad Turner. Another third down opportunity here 
for the Southern defense. And they, they've been inconsistent. They've been more varied in the times that they bring additional pressure. Let's we'll see what they choose to do here. Three wide outs to his left. Looking to his left. Plenty of time. Stands and fires. First down, Grambling and Verlin Hunter with a reception. Picking up 12 yards. And Verlin Hunter was not the star receiver throughout the season for the Tigers, but certainly the guy with the most vast skill set. Williams forced to go down there at the 40-yard line. That is sack number six for the Southern defense. Brought down by Aaron Tiller. The bulk of those sacks come in courtesy of the front four from the Jaguars. It takes so much pressure off the back end when you have a defensive line that can wreak havoc in the opponent's backfield. Second down, 13 now coming up for Williams. Three wideouts to his right this time. Buying some extra time to his left before he just floats that one out of bounds to bring up third down, 13. Gabe Eccles with the pressure there from that front four from Southern. Gabe Eccles is a very impressive player, over 300 pounds. He hits blocks really well versus the run, but you see there the nimble moves inside to break a pass protector off. Third down and 13, and Williams has two 100-yard receivers on the day. Hunter has 122, and Rodgers has a buck 14. Plenty of time, stands and fires, throwing in the coverage. That was intended for Chad Williams. And it'll bring up fourth and 13. Not four down territory yet. With still over 11 minutes remaining in the ball game. We'll see how quickly the Grambling State defense is able to get off the field or if they can come up with a stop. But there's a chance that by the next time the Grambling State offense is on the field, you may be in four down territory down multiple scores. Willie Quinn back to receive. And they again kick away from him. Nice job by the Tigers special teams. That ball rolls all the way down to the two-yard line. A punt of 58 yards by Tyler Oliver. Grambling defense, Anthony, they've come up with three consecutive stops. And the Tiger offense was answering each of the scores for the Jaguars, but just as... The Jaguars have stopped scoring. The Tiger offense has stopped as well. And Southern will take the field here. They're not completely in four-minute offense mode yet with so much time remaining in the fourth. But it's time for them to at least start being conscious of that. We know that they have focused on running the football. And here backed up, I believe the run game will be key in trying to get them away from their own goal line. You're still wanting to score. You're not completely focused on the clock yet. But you want the play clock to maybe run down a bit. Tillery around the left side. First down and then some as he cuts it back and lowers the shoulder out to the 17, a gain of 15 yards. Well, when Lennard Tillery can continue to gas the defense in this manner, whether you're up by two scores or down by two scores, it's just the right call to get the football in the hands of a playmaker like this. Lenard Tillery, 22 carries, 157 yards, the third consecutive game. He's been over 100. One back has 157. Grambling has 25. Top of the broadcast, we talked about how productive he'd been. More yards coming into this game than the top three rushers for Grambling, and that theme continuing for Southern here today. Tillery fights his way out to the 20-yard line. Lenard Tillery, in turning into the all-purpose back that we've seen him, display for us today. He was a guy that didn't have to block much in the offense he played in high school. And he joined this program as a walk-on, as he did. Dawson Odoms has been so impressed with the mentality that he's had in trying to improve in every aspect of playing tailback within this offense. We know what a great passer they had as a quarterback last season, the last couple of years in Dre Joseph. And as young freshman quarterbacks struggled early in the season, they leaned on Lennar Tillery in the running back position to help bring this offense along. Letting that play clock run down, now going right back to Tillery. A little hesitation, then acceleration. And he picks up four. On 
A proud afternoon for former walk-ons here at Southern Leonard Tillery. As you talked about, a walk-on to start his career. Earned a scholarship in the spring of 2013, and a little bit earlier in this half, former walk-on who's achieved at an even higher level, the highest level in pro football, Aeneas Williams, walked on to the Southern program. He is now in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, class of 2014. Third down and three for the Jaguar offense. Intercepted by the Tigers. That's Nicholas Peoples with the pick of the true freshman as Howard throws his first pick of the game. And the Tiger offense going to be in business. Austin Howard has taken advantage of this Tiger secondary throughout the game. Errant throw off the right arm of the true freshman for the Jaguars. Throws it right into the waiting hands of Nicholas Peoples. That could be the key error that Grambling State's been looking for. Now Howard hadn't thrown a pick in the previous four games, 126 throws. Costly one right there, and it's first down and 10 Tigers trailing by 14. Starting out this drive on the Southern 25-yard line. The Jaguars on two different occasions have enjoyed 21-point leads here in the second half. And once late in the first, but the Tiger offense just hanging around, responding with scores of their own, and the defense stepping up. They had three consecutive stops before they produced that interception. The Long rainbow. The tailback. The rainbow in what's been a rather cloudy game for Grambling on the defensive side of the football is that they've got an offense that kept them in this contest and special teams that have executed at a high level. And once again, the Jaguar rush defense is there to keep that to no gain. One of the discrepancies we've seen in this game, the Jaguar rush defense, Anthony, has come to play, while the Tiger rush defense has been gashed by Leonard Tillery. Eric Dooley, the offensive coordinator who works very closely with Broderick Fobbs in the play calls during the game. I believe we're at the point now where Grambling State can lose the run game Focus on Jonathan Williams and throwing the football back into this contest. What makes sense is they've only had 25 rushing yards so far. Williams keeps it himself, keeps his feet inside the 15-yard line, and right at the first down marker, gain a 10, and that is enough for a first down. This is one of the elements for a young quarterback who didn't play in a passing offense in high school, climbing vertically into the pocket. Jonathan Williams so often tries to escape laterally beyond the defense, but to work vertically, coming straight up the field at a defense, there's so often running lanes there. Tigers four trips inside the red zone today. Three touchdowns, one field goal. This is red zone trip number five. Jonathan Williams stands, fires, touchdown, Tigers! Verlin Hunter into the end zone for the second time today. The helmet barely on of Jonathan Williams taking another titanic blow in the backfield, but able to stand and deliver the football for a touchdown to Verlin Hunter. What a nice job by Williams of accepting that extra counter to. Knew he was going to get hit. Yeah. And fired a big time strike to Hunter. Extra point up and in, and we have a seven-point ball game. Are you willing to stare down the barrel when a defender bears down on you? Jonathan Williams has shown the moxie necessary to make plays for his team. And Hunter came into this game, Anthony, with 14 receptions in the whole season, and today he has 11 for 136 yards and two touchdowns. Variety of talented skill players have emerged at different points in the season for the Grambling State offense Jonathan Williams hasn't even been a constant at the quarterback position as we've touched on DJ Williams being the opening day starter Then Steven Johnson getting his opportunities Where Jonathan Williams hasn't been the practice player that Roderick Fobbs really wanted to see early in the season But as he entered contests and had comeback victories for this team Week after week, Jonathan Williams has proven to be a gamer. It's amazing with the way he finished last season, Anthony. was strong in the last three games, was okay here in the Bayou Classic, 
that he didn't come in as a starting quarterback, but he, in fact, as you said, started out as the third stringer this year. <laughs> Not even the backup. Right. <laughs> the number three QB. Playing like a starting quarterback today, 328 yards passing and now three touchdowns. This is Jaleel Richardson. Richardson with space around the left side. Jaleel Richardson with a path to the end zone. Touchdown, Southern. If you know one thing about Jaleel Richardson as a return man, he is a north-south runner. When there's a lane available, it's time for Jaleel Richardson to gallop. Textbook jugular apprehension from the return game of the Jaguars. A return game that's been strong all season. That's the third kick return for a touchdown this season. That's second among all FCS schools trailing only Murray State. Grambling did it with Kajandre Domino, a 99-yard kickoff return earlier in the second half. And Jaleel Richardson answers here at the 7.50 mark in the fourth quarter. For the first time, Grambling State had gotten back within one score. And they went with the same pooch kickoff, and it worked well for them early. The adjustment that was made as opposed to allowing the ball to bounce or putting their linebacker slash fullback, Brian McCain, in a position where he has to try to field it himself. Jaleel Richardson came up to field the short kickoff on his own. And when you catch the ball that short, it only takes one crack, one little crevice to go the distance. Highest scoring Bayou Classic ever here for the 41st time. 52-38, 90 points total, and still 7.50 left. <laughs> Wait a minute. Out of all the points that have been scored in the history of this game, none other than this is the most ever. Most ever for points to go along with what we've known all along the last three hours. The winner going to go on to play in the conference championship game next weekend. This has been fun. Domino looking to... Oh, he certainly wanted to get out past the 23-yard line already with one kickoff return touchdown today. Monday and Tuesday, the voice. Top eight take the stage live for your votes. Only you can keep their dreams alive with the final instant save. The Voice live Monday and Tuesday, 8, 7 central on NBC. I was hoping that during the Battle of the Bands at halftime we'd get a little Pharrell action in there, maybe some happy. It was an outstanding show. I didn't hear Pharrell, though. Haven't you, haven't you heard that one enough by now? I've heard it quite a bit. It's a valid point. <laughs> See how the Grambling offense responds now, trailing by 14 again. Williams doesn't see anything he likes, buys some extra time. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a walk-in touchdown for Chester Rogers. 76 yards. Try Nitro Toluene. Coursing through the veins of Jonathan Williams. This Tigers offense will not die. Coverage dropped from Southern in the secondary. Chester Rogers has a layup available to him, and he does not blow it. He probably felt like that ball was in the air for about 40 <laughs> seconds. Hauled it in, made it look easy, waltzed into the end zone, and once again we have a seven-point game. Jonathan Williams now 404 yards passing, four touchdowns and one pick. Rodgers, seven catches, 190 yards, and that one touchdown. Paul, I've got people on Twitter asking me what the highest arena football score ever is. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. <laughs> We've already got a Bayou Classic offensive record. Who knows what other leagues or levels of football this game could surpass. Roderick Fox probably appreciates a high-scoring game much more than his counterpart Dawson Odoms, who is a defensive guy through and through. Fox ran for over a thousand yards here as a running back for Eddie Robinson in the 70s. So as much as he would like for his defense to step it up here, 
probably doesn't mind seeing the 97 points. You can feel the emotion up here at the booth. What, what's the noise like, the energy like down on the field, Lewis? What did you say? I, I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I've been walking this field for many, many years, and I don't think I have ever seen the type of intensity, the joy, the excitement that I'm seeing and feeling from these fans out here. And there's an onside, onside kick that Bradley kick. discovers. Oh, my goodness. That emotion and the volume, especially from the Tigers' side, amped up a notch now. Touchdown reception followed up by a successful onside kick. Off the right foot of Marco Roscoe, showed it to the right side of the kickoff team, and then at the last moment had a boogie whip action in his hips and kicked it over to the left side where Martez Carter was able to leap into the air and make a Willie Mays style basket catch. Tigers now two for two with onside kicks this season. This one gives Jonathan Williams and the Grambling offense first down and 10 from their own 47 yard line, trailing by seven. That's how you get a little momentum back on your side. Big hits from DeAndre Woodland. I like that Jonathan Williams wasn't too eager, didn't seek the big play when it wasn't there yet. But you see there the ferocity of the hit coming from DeAndre Woodland. Surge from the Tiger offense been all about Williams. He has over 400 yards passing. And two receivers, Rodgers and Hunter, both have over 136 yards. Not a single player on the Grambling offense, not a running back or a receiver, is accounted for more than 30 yards of total offense besides those three. Williams firing a strike to Chester Rogers. And that's a first down Grambling. One of the hallmarks of the Grambling offense throughout the season has been the ability to focus on and feature a variety of players during particular game. They've had contests this season where 12 different people have had receptions in those games. It does make them far more difficult to game plan for in those types of games where defenses can't focus in on trying to shut down one particular offensive weapon. Well, Rodgers now has eight receptions, Anthony, for 201 yards. First down, Tigers. That ball batted just as it came out of the hands of Williams to bring up second down, Sam. Batted down by Arthur Miley, who is probably the lone defender on the field who maybe hasn't gotten a big hit on Jonathan Williams, but a great move clubbing up the field from Miley came in as the team's leader with seven sacks on the regular season and this the lone opponent or he, he, was, he was thinking he was talking to Lewis Johnson about it during the week wondering if this was the lone opponent he hadn't had a sack against but he was very excited about his final opportunity to get a sack in the Bayou Classic second time he's batted down a pass here in the 41st Bayou Classic Williams standing and looking deep and that one broken up near the end zone and providing the coverage there for the Jaguars Brian Anderson, freshman from right here in New Orleans. In this trips formation where you've got three receivers to the field side would have liked to have seen Chester Rogers on the post take the post more towards the middle. There, there seemed to be indecision about who the ball was actually intended for of the three receivers that were running up the numbers. Roderick Fobbs actually calling a timeout. It appears he wants to get his offense settled down here to make sure in the excitement of the moment where the Mercedes-Benz Superdome seems like it's just going to explode right now. Wants to make sure that people are assignment sound. And you see him stepping away, allowing Eric Dooley, his offensive coordinator, to address the entire offense and let everyone just take a breath for a moment. And I'll tell you what, Paul, I'm a little bit out of breath myself right now. I could use a breather. Thanks, Coach. Out of breath in a good way. Chester Rogers, eight catches, 201 yards and one touchdown. We have 6.40 left. Chester Rogers has showcased the soft hands necessary to make a quarterback comfortable. Running up the seam here, defeating multiple defensive backs. And now on the deep play opportunity where coverage gets dropped. The layup is there. And like a good hooper, you got to make sure you don't blow the layups. 
As quarterback Jonathan Williams has had two games this year where he's accounted for over 400 yards of total offense, but this is his first with over 400 yards passing. Third down and 10, looking down the right side. And there was some contact there on the intended receiver, Chad Williams, but no flag comes in. Chad Williams didn't appear to really try to fight back inside. He's being covered by a linebacker, Brian McCain. There was a little bit of contact down the field here as McCain you know, starts off with a little bit of face guarding, but I, I don't mind the no call there. I would have preferred to see Chad Williams try to make a better effort to come back down the field to try and get that football. Jonathan Wallace on to punt here on fourth down and 10. Willie Quinn back deep to receive for Southern. And he went for the pooch kick, and it never made it past the line of scrimmage. And here come the Jaguars. Kajana Curtis scooped it up. And that rugby-style low kick did not work out for the Tigers that time. By formation, they've been able to tell when Grambling State will go with the rugby-style kick. And so they overloaded the left side of the punt protection. You see there up top, both gunners to the right side. Every time both gunners are to the right side outside the numbers, that's where Jonathan Wallace attempts the rugby style kick. Love the coaching from Southern and Marty Biazzi, their special teams coordinator who also coaches the defensive backs. He dialed up the pressure at the right time. Herbert Edwards for Southern coming up with that block. And a key special teams play. Injured Grambling player being helped off the field. Edric Kutno, a senior wide receiver. The special teams for Grambling have been stellar throughout the game. That a key mistake. So from their own 49, Lenard Tillery putting his head down and cut down at the 45 and picks up six. And this is something Southern has right now that Grambling does not. Well, first of all, a seven-point lead. <laughs> but second, a running game to lean on as Tillery now has 170 yards rushing. He only came in needing 27 to get over 1,000. So this one of the great rushing efforts that the Southern program has seen. And the last time the Jaguars offense had the football, I talked through not really being in full four-minute offense mode at that point. This series, I do think, yes, now you go into full four-minute offense. A one-score lead trying to bleed the clock. Tillery now with 169. That is his career best. Almost gave a couple back. Tigers in the backfield there and there to finish him off, Steve Orisakwi. And that's a loss of two. Did this, give a couple back. <laughs> this now we see the opportunity for the Grambling defense that's always dialing up pressure. That nothing new, but it's got to get home here on third and long. They try to wrestle the Tigers back into this ball game and get the football back to their offense with an opportunity to tie up the contest. Tigers have converted, or pardon me, the Jaguars have converted six out of 13 times. This one is third down and eight. Tigers bring the extra pressure. Howard escapes, first down and then some. Right, once the true freshman got away from the initial pass rush, wide open spaces for a 23-yard gain on third and eight. Steve Orisakwi came completely unblocked on a delayed blitz right up the A-gap, and Austin Howard off the reverse pivot, spins outside, and while he's not Deontay Shorts, he may not be the biggest running threat that the Jaguars have at the quarterback position, but when this offense needed to move the chains, Austin Howard had the wheels to do it. First positive carry he's had all afternoon for 23 yards. Goes along well with 13 out of 21 for 253 through the air. Tillery down to the 22-yard line, picks up three. And that's a big moment. Steve Orisakwi has been such a spectacular defender. Really up for the Defensive Player of the Year award in the SWAC Conference. Eight and a half sacks coming into the game, leading the SWAC. He's more effective when he's downhill as a pass rusher being added to blitzes, but he has improved in pass coverage against this offense. 
the pass protection has been so stellar in today's game. And we've seen both he and Aaron Breed at a variety of points being cut down in the backfield by running backs, but most notably being picked up at the line of scrimmage by the Big Uglies. Play clock at one. They snap it. And Howard fires complete to his big side end, Montreal Jones, for a gain of three. To bring up another critical third down situation. Paul, you certainly know how difficult this scenario can be for a quarterback where folks at home can just look at it and say, well, you just let the clock run down to one and snap the football. But especially in a spread offense where you're using different motions, you occasionally have different personnel groups that are coming in and out of the lineup. For a true freshman quarterback in Austin Howard to have to lead this in bleeding the clock, trying to secure a victory for his team, these are moments beyond his years. Third down and four. They trust him to throw it. And that one nearly intercepted, trying to set up the screen to his tailback, Lenard Tillery. He slipped before the ball got there. Instead of catching it, batted it into the air. And fortunately for Southern, that one just fell to the ground. Austin Howard initially did a nice job just bringing the pass rush into him, showing some patience. And Tillery actually ran into his offensive tackle, Reginald Redding. As you mentioned, Paul, batted the football into the air. That could have been disastrous for the Jaguars. Greg Pittman from 37 yards out with 2.46 left to make it a two-possession lead for Southern. It's blocked! Grambling special team steps up when it had to, recovering it is Nicholas Peoples. They've already provided a touchdown on a kickoff return. And Tyree Hollins with a huge block. This game has had more twists and turns than a theme park roller coaster. Tyree Hollins comes inside, overloading the protection to the field side. And the leading interceptor in the Southwestern Athletic Conference laying out, just getting that left hand up in the air. Ball comes right off the forearm. That a moment that could have sealed the game for Southern University. But Tyree Hollins, this team's leader on the defensive side of the football, was able to keep him in it. Grambling offense comes back onto the field. They've not led in this game. The winner earns the right to play in the conference championship game next weekend. 2.30 left and two timeouts remaining. Look at the time for Williams. And eventually fires it out of bounds in the direction of Chad Williams. Southern pass rush. It's been spectacular throughout the game. Used a must rush. They didn't get home. And not even a trips. A quad formation out of a bunch set, and they drop coverage on Verlin Hunter, who's pleading with Jonathan Williams to deliver him the football, but he had left the pocket already at that point. And remember, Chester Rogers had an easy touchdown like that earlier in the fourth quarter, slipping behind the back end of that Jaguar defense. Second down 10 now. Williams 28 out of 52, 415 yards passing off his back foot. He thought Chad Williams was going to run that post corner, and Williams just set up and wanted it right in front of him. This, I believe, is four down territory because of the remaining time in the game. So I don't think they have to throw this beyond the sticks. And what it's been is the balance of the formations, the trips receivers, the quad receivers. We've seen multiple times now in this half, especially in the fourth quarter, where coverage has been dropped by Southern, not being able to sift through the traffic from the offensive set. Third down and 10, got to get out to the 49-yard line to keep it going. Williams slipped but still delivered a strike, and that's a first down grambling. Kajandre Domino. 99-yard kickoff return for a touch earlier. Moves the change there. This a nice, easy stack route. Domino does a nice job just working beyond the sticks. And Jonathan Williams delivers the football on the money for the first down. Williams doing the wise thing. Taking advantage of the soft corner. That's Berlin Hunter speaking of doing the, the right thing. Gets out of bounds. Stops the clock after a gain of six. No need to be in too big of a hurry here for Grambling State. Second and short. You're still near two minutes. Plenty of time here from just beyond the 42-yard line. Inside of two minutes now, the Tigers have not led in this game. They fell behind 14 to nothing and have been playing a furious game of catch-up ever since. 
Pump fake and looking deep to Domino incomplete. And it'll be third down and three. The intended receiver to Jandre Domino. I believe Jonathan Williams threw that one away on purpose. They tried to show the bubble screen short to Hunter, hoping that the secondary would bite on that and he'd be able to get Domino on the open touchdown pass. It was covered very well from the Southern secondary, and so Jonathan Williams threw it out of bounds. Third down and three situation now, 151 left. Jaguars threatening blitz, they bring five. And the blitz makes the play. Batting that one down, Martin Henry, the linebacker. Deflected passes. Against the diminutive quarterback, only five foot eleven is Jonathan Williams. Martin Henry this comes blitzing through the open part of the zone, getting his hands on the football, bringing up fourth down. Fourth down and three, and think about everything on the line here for Grambling. Coming off back-to-back -back one win seasons. Seven points away from tie in this game in the Bayou Classic, with the winner moving on to the conference title game. Good pocket for Williams, stands and fires, and that's been his man all game long. Chester Rogers for four. He now has 205 yards receiving. Just enough to move the chains. That's all you were looking for in that situation as Grambling State. Now with the first down coming up, a look with me, look at, check with me tempo. Jonathan Williams peering towards the sideline to his offensive coordinator, Eric Dooley. Back to the air for Williams. Jaguars bring five. And that time, Hunter turned into a defensive back to knock that one away from DeAndre Woodland. Ended up being a dangerous pass. Jonathan Williams really should have been looking to deliver this more over the outside shoulder. Another one-on-one -on -one opportunity between Woodland and Hunter. As you referenced, Paul, Hunter had to turn into a DB, making sure it didn't turn into an INT. Two wideouts to his left, two to his right. Stands and fires to his right. Velocity and accuracy again to Chad Williams. And he gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 107 left. Chad Williams came in leading the team in both yards and touchdown receptions. He's gotten plenty of one-on-one -on -one coverage to what now is the boundary side, the shorter side of the field. Play clock continuing to run here now inside of 10 seconds. The clock is stopped at 107. I'm sure if, if perhaps the helmet of Andre Gunn, the center, if that came off. Actually, a complete guess on my part. Not sure why the stop in the action, but Andre Gunn, the center, did run off the field. Now the play clock stopped. It's now back to 1918. Most points ever in a Bayou Classic. Winner plays in the title game. Also here in the 41st, the two teams are tied at 20. So the winner can claim an advantage in the overall series. Williams keeps it himself. A first down and then some for the Tigers. Williams still on his feet down to the 11-yard line. 447 yards passing and a big 18-yard run. Jonathan Williams. Talks about modeling his game after Russell Wilson. Another diminutive quarterback with a strong arm and wheels to threaten the defense. 48 seconds and counting on first and 10. Williams out wide to Rodgers. Did not get out of bounds. Nice play by Danny Johnson to keep him in bounds. And both the defense and the offense are just exhausted at this point. Hands. Normally, it would be the defense looking for a timeout to try to regain their poise and their breath here. But since Grambling State is the team trailing, Robert Fobbs decides again to take the timeout and regroup with 36 seconds remaining. Grambling now uses its third timeout, none left for the Tigers. So thinking defensively here, for Southern, Anthony, do you, do you play back and, and play zone and play coverage? Or are you coming after Williams with a blitz? I think now coming out of the timeout, you can have more confidence that your pass rush can heat things up in the pocket. 
So you play coverage, especially because of the formations that we've seen from Grambling State throughout this fourth quarter. Bunch sets and trips looks, sometimes even quad looks to the wide side of the field. Those can be difficult to defend when you don't have additional defenders who can work over the top. So if I were Southern and Dawson Odom, their head coach slash defensive coordinator, I think you allow that front four to pressure the quarterback like they've done so effectively throughout the game and leave seven in coverage. Alcorn State awaits the winner next weekend in Houston for the SWAC championship. The winner today claims the Western Division title and a spot next weekend in the title game. And the Buck linebacker Martin Henry and the Mack linebacker Demetrius Carter. They've both had different moments where they've been in position to spy Jonathan Williams. Williams to the end zone. Verlin Hunter had a shot at it. It looked like it might have been touched by Domino before it got to Hunter. Again, a bit of confusion between the wide receivers not being certain of who the football is actually intended for to run proper routes and have the necessary spacing by both formation and your actual execution in running the route. It's so vital here inside the 10 yard line where spacing is more condensed. Tigers do not have to score a touchdown to keep it moving. They can get a first down inside the two yard line, but to the end zone they go. Looking for Hunter, who has 12 catches already today, but does not get the 13. Williams was looking for Hunter. At the end of the play, Hunter was looking for a flag. Basically a box out move there from DeAndre Woodland. 24 seconds left, here's the game. And again, Grambling can keep it moving without scoring a touchdown if they get inside the two yard line. This is fourth down and eight. 14th play of the drive. Williams out to his right. Keeps it himself. Did not get into the end zone, but he is inside the one. Clock continuing. It appears he at least has a first down. So the clock did continue to run for a moment, but once it was ruled a first down, clock stops there for a moment. Grambling State out of timeouts. I think it was the proper call on the field. It is a first down. Got to get up and get this one snapped. Dawson Odom's trying to figure out that someone call a timeout. If the runner was short of the goal line, the privileges play is under review. Again, he had to get inside that two-yard line for a first down. He did make it that far. I don't believe he made it into the end to the end zone there, Anthony, as we can see right here. You've got to respect the effort of Jonathan Williams in this Grambling State offense. I think it's like we're saying here, Paul, and the call on the field should stand, should be confirmed as Williams lays out between two different defenders. We see there, that's an indisputable look. That confirms to me that the call on the field was correct. But what this will give, as you were highlighting, Paul, first down inside the one, but no timeouts remaining for Grambling. So either way, the clock is going to stop with the first down. But once the ruling comes in from the official, they need to be in position to kill the football. Or just have a play call. We're coming off of what's essentially a timeout anyway. So they can set themselves. And the ball set there inside the one-yard line. 12 seconds left. No timeouts remaining for Grambling. And a complete lack of running success. So you would expect them to look to the air. Jonathan Williams, who has 449 yards passing today is also the leading rusher with 50 yards. He doesn't have a running back who's totaled over 10. So both those men, Roderick Fobbs on the left, Dawson Odoms on the right, they talked over the last two weeks about a Super Bowl-type atmosphere expected here in New Orleans for the Bayou Classic with everything on the line in the Western Division to try and go face Alcorn State in the SWAC championship game. 
the recruiting aspect that we referenced earlier. This is why players go to Southern. This game at these moments are why players go to Grambling State University. Time for two plays in the passing game. Potentially three if you go quickly, but you're probably counting on two for Grambling. Inside the one yard line, 12 seconds left. Again, no timeouts remaining for the Tigers. The Tigers offense already out over the football, preparing themselves for what we anticipate will be the call of a first down. And Jonathan Williams under center, where they don't work from very frequently. The QB center exchange, obviously very important here. As we talked about, no real need to run a clock play here, but that appears to be the formation that Grambling State is in right now. After further review, the ruler on the field is confirmed. The runner was down inbounds, short of the goal line. The clock was started when I ready for play. So it is a good thing grambling on the line, ready to roll because the clock is about to start from 12 seconds on down. Trey Goins now in. Or excuse me, Andre Gunn now back in at the center position. Come out, Southern University. This is our first time out of the half. So Dawson Odoms wants to talk it over with his defense. In addition to being the head coach, he is also the defensive coordinator. What's your plan here defensively now inside the one yard line? Defensively, I'll walk both linebackers up into the A gaps. Not necessarily to bring a blitz, but to have presence there. And I believe you pinch the defensive line, and Dawson Odoms now has the dry race board to draw this up for his defensive front. Well, I believe you pinch the defensive line into the inside, and then your linebackers have to know that when you're running that type of Club movement operator, with the D line. When you're running that type of movement with the D line, the linebackers have to be in position to immediately trigger. No timeouts left in a running game that's failed today. Jonathan Williams expected to look to the air. He has two receivers who have come through for him today so far. Chester Rogers, 10 catches for 207 yards. And Verlin Hunter, 12 for 143. Doesn't have another receiver with more than two receptions today. Doesn't have one with more than 30 yards receiving. They appear to be trying to get the clock straight as far as the remaining time in the game. It did jump back and forth a couple of different times there. But we just went from 12 seconds to eight. And it was six just a moment ago. Then it went up to 150. <laughs> now we're back to eight. Roderick Fobbs thinking about two plays, would certainly like to just run one and have it bring him to within one point before an extra point. Roderick Fobbs told me before the game as he was at McNeese State the last few years, he always tried to keep an eye on the Bayou Classic and the former honor student and two-time captain here running back, now seeing if his offense can punch it in. Jonathan Williams on the quarterback sneak. Clock's running. The clock is still running, and that's how it ends. <laughs> the Tigers did not have a timeout remaining, but still chose to keep it on the ground. They didn't get in, and that's how it ends. Pad level. Hand placement is what these inches are made of in a goal-to-go -go scenario. A defensive front from the Southern Jaguars that has absolutely dominated this ball game came up huge yet again. You see there, as we talked about, with the pinch movement up front, linebackers in position to trigger. Demetrius Carter in there, Martin Henry right there helping to move the pile. Team captain Brian McCain 
making sure at the end that Jonathan Williams does not cross the strike. Well executed inside. Gay Beckles, the nose, the 305 pounder, getting underneath the pads of the center, Andre Gunn. You see the grambling offense still out of the field. And that's it. The Tigers may have believed they had one timeout remaining. Or they may have even thought they scored. The, re the review process appeared to go into place there. Because on the scoreboard, it says one timeout left for Grambling. It has said that the entire time here after the officials told us a couple moments ago they had used their final timeout. So they may have looked up at the official clock and seen that it says one timeout remaining. It still says that on the board. But after they called a timeout late in that drive, the announcement came the Tigers used their third and final timeout. So Broderick Fobbs in his first Bayou Classic as the Grambling head coach sees it come to an end that way Southern hangs on to win 52 to 45. Here's Dawson Odoms, the head coach of Southern with our own Lewis Johnson. Well, what a scene down here, Coach Odoms. What do you make, first of all, of the way the game ended there? <laughs> I mean, both teams had a will to win today, but a lot of big plays, a lot of game changers. But, you know, we're going back to Houston. I mean, it came down to the wire. We, I mean, a lot of points were scored, but at the end of the day, we had to make a play and take your head off to these guys, man. What an awesome ride it's been. It seemed as though the first quarter really was the saving grace for you guys. You jumped out to an early lead, but then things changed dramatically. How did you weather the storm? I mean, let me tell you, everything we've been through, I like this group with they, with they back against the wall. You know, it's, it's outstanding, man. They work hard. They don't complain. They stay positive. We score, they score. What a resilient bunch. Proud of them. Can you put a couple sentences together for your quarterback, Austin Howard? He was really lights out today here in this Bayou Classic. I mean, true freshman, but... We recruit to play guys, right? You know, and I think that's what it's all about. I got to tell them the next guy got to step up. We lost Dre Joseph, but he stepped up, and I'm just happy for him, man. You'll never, you'll never be able to understand what this feel like. They call it a, a brotherly quarrel every year down here, and you had a big embrace for Broderick Fobbs. What did you say to him as he had to accept your condolences or your the, the words in loss there? Well, I mean, it's, it's tough on him. I mean. You worked so hard. They had a great year, you know, but at the end of the day, you got to make plays. They they put the ball in what I think is the best player in their team hands, and, and we did a great job of keeping them out of the end zone. It came down to the wire. This is the state of Louisiana, Bayou right. Classic, Grambling right. Southern. These fans today had a treat. Incredible game. Thanks so much, and good luck against Alcorn. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> right. Wow, what a scene down here. Amazing, Lewis, an amazing finish. Eight seconds left in the clock, and the Tigers choose to go with a running play, a quarterback sneak that was stuffed short of the goal line, and the, the seconds just ticked away, and Southern hangs on to win 52-45. to 45. The last two years in October and November, they moved to 13-1. and one. They'll go to the conference championship game for the second consecutive year. Austin Howard, the true freshman there, 257 yards passing and three touchdowns. And it feels like a long time ago, but it started with a touchdown <laughs> toss to Willie Quinn. Mike Jones had a monster first half. Two catches for 100 yards, both catches going for touchdowns. But Grambling would not go away, even when they were down by 21 points in that second half, they kept coming back. Lenard Tillery went over 1,000 yards today, had 169 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns. And more Mike Jones. There's his second of two touchdowns. Jonathan Williams with the arm strength late in the first half to cut that lead to 14. And then Tillery. At this point, it looked like it was going to be all Southern in the second half. That put him up by three touchdowns early in the third quarter, but the Tigers just wouldn't go away. There was a puzzle that could not be solved for the Grambling State defense, but special teams kept them in the contest and then also brought them back to the forefront of an opportunity to win this game. Kajandre Domino with the huge punt return touchdown. And of course, another response there from Deontay Shorts.
getting into the end zone, but Jonathan Williams was spectacular all throughout the game, even through drops from the wide receivers, through a monstrous pass rush from Southern. He continued to respond and showed the leadership that this Grambling State team needed. But really the turning point in the game were two special teams plays that got made in the second half. Jaleel Richardson here of Southern with the kick return touchdown responding to those pooch kicks. With Jonathan Williams, the arm strength running to his left all the way down the field to Chester Rogers, deep and alone in the secondary, going score for score. And then the play that decided the game as it was near cold, crush, depth, the defensive line underneath the pads of the offensive blockers. They're going for the quarterback sneak with no timeouts left, eight seconds left, that ended it. And Jonathan Williams after 499 yards of total offense and four touchdowns on the field right now with our Lewis Johnson. And what a battle it was, Jonathan. Nobody understands this more than you do. The moment here having to concede to Southern. What are your emotions at this time? Um, of course, we're sad we lost. Southern played a great game, though. We missed out on some opportunities, but now it's back to the drawing board. Just got to start over. You also played a great game, even though it was in defeat, almost 500 yards of passing. Just talk about the way you were able to execute, move the ball down the field, and especially late in the game when it really counted. Um, it just come with our coaches preparing us and most of all, just, just God being on our side at, at those moments. We just timing with the receivers and my O-line up there blocking giving me time to get the ball to the receivers. Jonathan, you are a red shirt sophomore, if I'm not mistaken, and you'll be coming back again. What do you take away from this experience, this moment, to drive you back to be on this field again next year? Just got to come out, come out with it on our minds every, every game. Not just this game, it's every game. We got to have fast starts, and when it really, when it really counts, we got to dig down deep. It's all about who wants it more. All right, you played a heck of a game. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Paul? Lewis, thank you very much. Jonathan Williams, 499 yards to total offense, 449 yards passing and four touchdowns. But not quite enough. The Jaguars win 52 to 45, and for the second consecutive year, they go from a victory in the Bayou Classic to the Southwestern Athletic Conference Championship game in Houston. This time it'll be against Alcorn State. An outstanding Alcorn State team led by Coach Hobson. You see now the final standings in the Western Division of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Southern yet again Western Division champions. Grambling State led by Broderick Fobbs, who's up for the Eddie Robinson Award as the most outstanding coach at the FCS level. And so it would appear with Dawson Odoms in year two leading Southern and now Broderick Fobbs bringing Grambling State back to the forefront of the SWAC that each of these programs, I believe, is back. What a comeback for Grambling the last couple of seasons. It's Southern that's celebrating right now, but Grambling has to feel good once it gets away from the disappointment of not scoring with eight seconds left and just having those seconds tick away. They won one game last year. They won one game the year before. Two and 21 the last two years of the 252 teams in Division I, FBS and FCS. Only five teams won that few games to the brink of the conference title and only two losses in the conference this year. What a job by Broderick Fobbs. But it's going to be the true freshman, Jonathan Williams, right there after throwing for 257 yards in the air. Three touchdowns. It's his Jaguars that move on to play one more game, and that game for the right to call themselves conference champions for the second consecutive year. This is really what the Bayou Classic should be. It's always a fun atmosphere and a great event, but a game with two championship-level teams playing at their best. Such fun, such excitement, the pageantry that is the Bayou Classic on display. 41st Bayou Classic in the book. Southern now leads the all-time series 21 to 20. Remember, Sunday night is football night, America's game of the week. We'll have the Broncos in Kansas City taking on the Chiefs. The 41st Bayou Classic, the most points ever, 52 to 45. The Southern Jaguars hang on against their arch rival, the Grambling Tigers. They will play in the conference title game one week from today in Houston. 52 to 45, the final for Lewis Johnson and Anthony Heron. I'm Paul Burmeister. Thanks for being with us this afternoon. So long from New Orleans. Ticket to an AFC West showdown in prime time.